It's time for Twig this week in Google. Stacy has the week off. We brought in Aunt Pruitt. There is a lot to talk about. I will install the Android 11 beta as we proceed. Google has shipped 7.2 million Pixel phones in 2019. Is that cause for celebration or dismay? And an operating system for the end of the world. It's all coming up next on Twig. This Week in Google comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. Stay in control when it comes to your company's access points and authentication. LastPass makes enterprise-level security simple for your remote workforce. Check it out at lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Twig. This Week in Google, episode 563, recorded Wednesday, June 10th, 2020. But enough about my vasectomy. This Week in Google is brought to you by LastPass. Prepare for the unexpected in your business with LastPass, trusted by over 17 million users and 61,000 businesses worldwide. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. It's time for Twig This Week in Google, the show where we cover very little Google. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to try that. You know, I'm warning you. There won't be any Google. No, there will. Actually, there's a lot of Google this week. But, there's uh, a lot of Google. There's we Google. do whatever we want because it's our show. We get to do that. Jeff Jarvis is here. He is the... Oh, no. Rate my Skype room 10 out of 10. Uh, uh, professor for Journalistic uh, Innovation. At the Craig Newmark Graduate School of Journalism All at the City University. All credit to my wife. Yeah. She was very happy and very proud. Really? She won. She, oh, so yeah. this is her decor. Oh, are you kidding? <laughs> That's not yours. <laughs> so so all those pictures over that over that way, right? Yeah. I, I got, I got, he complained a little bit. He's for, for, he wanted for a, a few large pieces. Yeah. But. I'm quite fond of what she put together there. That includes two uh, incunabula, pages from very early books, a few statues of Gutenberg, wow. uh, a big uh, image of, uh, of an ink factory. It's all very Gutenbergian. It's very fancy. <laughs> very fancy. Yeah, he said, uh, right, my Skype room is a Twitter account. Um, and he said, uh, yeah, that was the one flaw, although he gave you 10 out of 10, so that's, that ain't yeah, much no, of a that's, flaw. That's but he, uh, he gave you one... Uh, Let's see. Let me let me pull it up here. Uh, he said, "Books, depth, chairs, French doors. Would prefer one to two big pieces on left." He feels like that's not balanced, I guess. But I quibble. Ten out of ten, Jeff Jarvis. Yes. <laughs> Pretty good for the Leonard Tao Professor for Journalistic Innovation at the Craig Nomark Graduate School of Journalism at the City University of New York. Pretty. Pretty. No, I'm, I'm retiring now because my life is complete. Pretty I've done it all. Good. Once I hit Skype, my Skype room, <laughs> right by Skype room, that's it. I need I need work no more. As we mentioned last week, Stacy has the week off. I'm so pleased to have Aunt Pruitt with us, Yay! though. Yay! From Hands On Photography, <laughs> Hands On Wellness, his latest show. Good to see you, yes, Aunt. Yes, sir. You too, Mr. Laporte and Mr. Jarvis. Something's How different. Something's different. I can't put my finger on it. Did you just he's, shave he, your he's head? Gotten a, he's, he's gotten tenure at the university. Yeah, I... I did give myself a haircut the other day. <laughs> can, you, can you do me? I don't want to see sure. you bald, Jeff. Actually, we saw you bald. You you shaved your head like I did. No, for... no, 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 no. I just shaved my face. I was not stupid enough no, you shaved your face. to shave my head like you did. Yeah. I goaded you into it, as I recall. Uh, but I was did not you? Was it your myself. fault? Good. I can I blame so. you. It was for charity. We raised money for UNICEF. I think a tattoo might have been my fault, too. I don't know, but. The hair grew back. It's all for the good. The it's all for the good. It's still there. Oh. Um, I guess I should put some Google in here. Just to, just to, <laughs> just to, just to prove them prove. wrong. So I, you know, it's funny because it depend. It's all perspective. According to IDC, Google shipped 7.2 million Google Pixel phones in 2019. Which sounds, you know, that's like less than one week of iPhone. I was going to say, that's not very good. It's, it sounds not so good, and yet, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, I think, more than they've ever sold before. Uh, Google considers it uh, a cause to celebrate. It's more than one plus sell, sold. 
Um, no. Credit to the 3A, uh, which was, of course, uh, the low-priced version of the Pixel 3. Uh, and, of course, we haven't seen the 4A yet this year. Google's probably not going to release that till next month, according to rumors. But, but that's the thing about those numbers are, uh, is it's the 3A. You know, that's the perfect price yeah. point for someone trying to get into a clean, air quotes, clean version of Android and good enough hardware at the time. It's not going to be flagship style, but it's still going to be good enough for most people. So, yeah, they should... Uh, be able to sell those phones, but in the bigger scheme of things, it's still a little bit disappointing. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, it is the best uh, year Google's ever had with its hand, its own house made handsets. Fifty two percent up over twenty eighteen, the year previous. So I guess it is cause for celebration. But it's didn't just... Google get rid of the Pixel people? <laughs> yeah, I think I, I feel like they might have. They were very unhappy with sales the year before. Uh, it was a terrible year. It does. It's dwarfed by Samsung and Apple, but maybe Google, I don't know. what Google, We never knew what Google's ambitions were in this. You know, what were they trying to beat Apple and Samsung? Surely not. Were they trying to create a phone that showed the best of Android? Possibly. Uh, it used to be the Nexus line was a low cost phone for developers. That's clearly mm -hmm. not true with Pixel. Although I agree with you, Ann. I think the less expensive phone is the best. Buy. I love my 3A XL, 3A XL. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Love it. It still bugs me um, that the, their flagship versions just don't ever quite live up because you, you just gave out three different points. And I would lean that point two is what they were trying to do is more so of competing with the Apples and Samsung as far as flagship devices, because why in the heck would they uh, price these things as a thousand dollars a pop? Uh, that's flagship. Right size and, and and these things they just don't quite live up to it. You know, I appreciate good old Uncle Leo hooking me up with this here Pixel Four XL, <laughs> but this thing is not Do worth you, the money that yeah. Uncle Leo paid for. What it. don't it's you not, like about it? Um, that is not much of a difference from my Pixel from the Pixel Three yeah. or even heck my son's Pixel Two that he's using. It's not much different from yeah. a user standpoint the camera is sure better. your son would trade with right. you yeah he would he would but <laughs> it's but the thing is if we did trade i wouldn't see much of a difference performance wise other than That's if i wanted to trade. go out and shoot something with the camera yeah. but just regular swiping through it, it, it is not that much of a difference and it's clearly not worth that money we will be able to put android 11 on it Apparently today. Uh, I'll leave that to Mr. Howell. Yeah, he I'm likes not gonna breaking do it. phones. <laughs> <laughs> nah, kind of that. Uh, this is from the Android Developers blog. The Android 11 beta available now. I don't. I don't know if that's the public beta or the developer. Hasn't the developer beta been out for a while? Also, yes, sir, the developer preview's already been out. Yeah, so this must be the public uh, beta. Let me let me see if I can. Uh, should I do it? No. Should I do it? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Yeah. You can if you yeah, should, should Jason should you read the blog. Jason's yes, your you mic. Should read the I blog. should read the blog. I should. Uh, so all you have it. to do is you have to say uh, what your eligible phone is. Go ahead. Let's see. Oh boy, this is worse than last year. If you install a beta version, you will not be able to unenroll and revert back to a lower public release of Android without wiping all locally saved data on your device. You may also encounter issues restoring a backup. Sign me up to receive program updates. I'm a developer. No, I agree to the terms of the beta program. Yes, I'm gonna do it. Why not? Why not? <laughs> uh -oh. I swore up, up. Right, row. Did I not check it, all? It's do I, saving you from yourself. I guess you have to check all three. Do I have to check them all? Really? No. That's crazy. No, surely not. Oh, maybe I did. Oh, I see. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not wow. a developer. Are they, it's they, like you're a qualified uh, investor kind and of they're thing. They're going to. You sure they are. That's sure. All sure? that is is more C Y A. Oh, oh C Y A. Yeah. Yeah. C Y A. <laughs> so now, it. if I go to update my device, it won't happen right away, but I'll check anyway because you know me. Come on. <laughs> come on. Come on. Where's my update? Where's Wait. my update? Checking for impatient much. <laughs> yes, very.
<laughs> oh, it's going to do it. It's going to do it. It's going to do it. Oh. A beta version of Android R. What is the R going to stand for? Are we up to R? Wow, I didn't even realize that. Pi. And then Q was nothing, right? It was just Q. Right. Yeah, it was just Q. 10. So we're now we're up to R. R. We're up to rice pudding. Rice pudding. I think I'll pass, sir. <laughs> <laughs> R Rolos uh Rolo Ro Ro <laughs> R as PS Chops in our chat room says R for regret. <laughs> I will I will give them credit with these beta releases. The last two at least seem to have been okay uh when you look at the message boards because uh Everybody goes in expecting it not to be perfect because it's a beta install, but it wasn't a whole lot of complaints. And then you take it along to when it actually gets to production, a lot of that stuff is is still there, and they've even added a few more things. And it's it's been okay. So, but it's still it's not something that I want to do. Yeah, uh, not anymore. I Those have done it in the past and regretted it. Yes. But I mean, to be perfectly honest, it's not my main phone. I'm I'm kind of more the iPhone guy. Yeah, you, yeah. I thought you were an iOS guy. Well, watch it, watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Truth's gonna come out. Truth Honestly, is gonna come out. For, for a long time, I was an Android guy because I liked the flexibility. I liked the fact that I could change the launcher. Uh, I liked the right. widgets. Um, and really, I don't think there's much of a difference between the apps. Uh, I just like the freedom that Android represented. But unfortunately, uh, with great freedom comes great hackage. And, great uh, fragmentation. And fragmentation and lack of privacy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, they see you. This is, this, is, this, is the, this is the Leo reverting to his norm. You just keep on giving up everything new. You give up Facebook, you give up Twitter, you give up Android. I'm trying, uh, uh, au contraire. And, and you're the host professor. of the show from now on. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Okay, I you're open okay, my aunt, take over. Uh, no, au contraire, mon professeur. <laughs> I am merely trying to navigate through the uh, Schiller and Charybdis of uh, technology these days is a very difficult pathway and uh, you kind of, you know, you got sho the shoals of privacy to the right. You've got the shoals of hackers to the left. You're trying to somehow get your way down safely. And I feel like, admittedly, I'm giving up a lot of control with the iPhone, but I feel like it's safer. It's safer. Mm. That's fair. Yeah. We're not going to say mm. right or wrong, but I, I think that's fair, though, because of how Thank Apple you. closes things down and Thank tend you. to be... A little bit more it's, buttoned it's, up on it things. It is a, uh, I admit, it's a gated uh, village. It's a gated, uh, but, you know. Okay, you can be the host of the show, Ant. You win. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> after after your nihilism last week, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I have a book for you to read. Okay, go ahead. Um, Humankind by, by Rutger Bergman. Oh, yeah, I've been, Bergman. I've been hearing about that. It's good, huh? Yeah, I, well, yeah, I mean, that's the one we already talked about the story from the uh, Lord of the Flies real story. Yeah. And you were you were dubious that anything could be good about mankind, as is your new nihilistic way. Yeah. Um, and the, and the book I think it falls apart at the end. It gets really. Um, yeah, just like humankind. Uh, no. <laughs> so you need to hear we, just a few have, hopeful stories. We have That's fallen apart at the end. We're doing it right you now. This is when we fall apart. But, and and are you basically a, pep, a pessimist he's, or not? He's not nihilistic. He's realistic. That's that's what. Thank I Oh no! What's happened to you, Aunt? <laughs> oh no! You. I thought you were the nice oh, guy. No. So I just oh, no. read about. Oh, boy. This I shuts just, down as affected I, everybody. I just I was going to make this my pick, but I think it's uh, apropos today. I just read about a new uh, operating system called Collapse OS. <laughs> <laughs> this is winter is this, coming. This is winter is coming. He <laughs> believes that by 2030 the global supply chain will collapse. Y2K. And you won't Y2K. be Y2K for the 2030, you won't be able to get all of these complex processors and you and no one knows how to make them. So he's made an operating system to preserve wow. the ability to program microcontrollers through civilizational collapse. You could do a wow. TRS-80? Oh, that's oh perfect. not even that good. I mean, we're talking a Z80 or, or worse. The idea, you don't want it too fancy because you won't be able to get them. What you want is processors you can take out of old stuff. Right. Because you're not going to be able to get them anymore. 
Bare bones. Collapse baby. OS. <laughs> so that's 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 uh, that's 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 my nihilism. That fits your mood. Yeah, that fits your mood. Yeah. <laughs> Winter is Jeff, coming. It's all coming down around our shoulders, and you don't see oh, it. Oh. You're you're the dog sitting there saying this is fine while the house is burning up. Oh Jesus! No, I don't. I, I go back and forth. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna we're having a little trouble with that. No, he's back. So the folks who hear that as the show goes on, and Skype is being being nihilistic. Skype doesn't so, Skype doesn't like me today, but it's okay. Rucker Bregman wrote Utopia for Realists, and now he's got a new book, which this I think just came out, right? Uh, they call it, it. I just I finished listening it's to it last the night. Sapiens of 2020. I loved it, Sapiens. It, it, it falls over the end where it gets a little bit um, to um, Malcolm Gladwell. This is that whole category, the Daniel Pink, Malcolm Gladwell, Yuval Noah Harari category of optimistic. You know, it ain't that bad. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Media's fault. Media keeps showing you all the worst. So, so okay. So Amazon. I'm at the Amazon listing. Humankind: A Hopeful History. And then it's books you may like: The Great Influenza, <laughs> The Wages of Destruction, <laughs> the the Deficit Myth, Lifespan, Why We Age, and Why We Don't Have to. It's not good. This is look at it. It's the same people. All right, I'll read it. I will read it because uh, God knows the we first, need some good the first news. First two thirds. So you just need a few hopeful stories. You need to, you, you know, is that pose Ant gave us a minute ago? Yeah. You can pick. You need a little bit of that. You can pick and choose. Right. Professor, good Professor or Ant. bad. You can, you know, <laughs> there's, there's plenty of examples. Yes. Either. Yes. I'm more interested in in the trend than any any particular anecdotal information. What do you think the trend? Here, hey, here's some good news. The Pixel Buds, <laughs> they might oh, work boy. again. After I've returned oh. two pair of the thing. How can you not be a nihilist? Things. How can you not be a nihilist? Everything is my crap. Son. I feel bad for my son, son because he him? was so excited about those oh. and he ordered a pair. And so what happened, Dan? It was the first day he was fussing about Sound the connection in and out? on the first day. Yeah, oh, yeah, same here. Oh. I went through another pair. I upgraded the OS, the uh, the firmware, which is not easy to do, by the way. And um, uh, yeah, they they were. They, I loved the design. I loved the sound. Right. I loved all of that. But they didn't damn work. So did your son return them or what? No, he still has them. Um, okay, I think it was hope. one of those lesson learned. He might be not yet. Thing. There's hope. So this is the original post going back to May first. Pixel Bud audio issue, cutting in and out while moving my head. This is what everybody's reporting, static yep. and unpairing, right? And finally, here's a response from Google employee First Chelsea time. W. I've got a quick follow-up on some of the improvements we've identified and are expecting to roll out in the coming weeks. Decrease instances of well, phone call cutouts. Don't decrease them. Get rid of them. <laughs> Improve auto nice. recovery when one or both earbuds lose connection. Improve media playback stability for phones that have software audio encoded. Encoding separately this week. This week, this was yesterday. Firmware 296 will be released that decreases the audio hissing static noise. Some of you might expect. Did you have that? Did your son have that? I didn't have that. He didn't mention anything about oh, static. He so just they're mentioned fix, the cutout all the time. Fix, the thing you don't have. The problem you don't have because it's cutting out. It doesn't matter. Right. That's what he mentioned. It's just always cutting out. Now, to Google's credit, for me personally, I didn't necessarily start getting into wireless earbuds until late last year because historically I never had a good relationship with wireless earbuds or wireless headphones because there was always some sort of interference or just connection issues with me, whether I had the phone in my pocket or the phone in my hand. So I always just tried to stick with a wired um, connection. Same here. But- yeah. You know, but now I have two different things that I've been using here recently because they've been consistent with keeping me connected and not having any of these issues. So when he was when my son was telling me about the pixel buds cutting out, I went and looked online and saw that everybody was saying the exact same thing, which is pretty much what I've said about Bluetooth wireless yeah, earbuds Bluetooth. for the get go. Yeah. You know, so maybe it's not so Google, it's just a spec. Well, was no, your son having the problem inside or outside or, or outside or both? Uh, he didn't say. I'm going to assume Usually it's, the, the, it's a weird, weird thing. Most of it, 
people report it's outside. Now, now figure that out. I don't think it's Bluetooth. I think it's something else. Yeah, because I wear Bluetooth mm -hmm. headphones, and admittedly, <laughs> it's not as good as wired. They're going to drop out every, halfway through a call. They'll drop out and stuff. But but basically, they're much more stable than anybody's reporting for the Pixel Buds. They's, those are yes. abnormally bad. Now, I don't I don't think right. it's Bluetooth. I think it's some okay, kind it's of adjustment. I think it's I think it's 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 the in ear sensing, yeah. and it cuts mm -hmm. itself off. Yeah. And then the two communicate in some way that I don't think is Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is. Um, right. I just figure it's going through my head. I got too much gray matter. Yeah. You're so smart, <laughs> both of you, that they don't work. Yeah. Your son is very smart. And it just it can't get through the metal plate. Oh, he's got you, fool. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were the one who's always calling them, uh, what, rock heads, what? boulder heads? Hard heads. Hard heads. Hard heads. Maybe. <laughs> they can't get through the cement. <laughs> Um, had enough Google yet? Well, don't worry. There's more. We got more. <laughs> Google sued for secretly amassing vast trove of user data. This is a complaint filed in federal court in San Jose. The lawsuit argues that while Google lets users turn off data collection during its use by Chrome's web browser, other Google tools used by websites themselves scoop up the data anyway. In effect, you could, and by the way, this is by the world-famous law firm of Boys Schiller Flexner, LLP. Um, the company. I didn't who, quite understand that explanation. Well, um, because if you turn, if you go, let's say, in incognito mode, or don't even use a Google browser at all, mm -hmm. plenty of sites, including, by the way, Twit, use Google yep. Analytics. Uh, if oh, it has, okay. there's Google Ad Manager. So essentially, it doesn't even matter. All right. And Google's strategy all along. And if you use an Android device, <laughs> good luck not giving Google information right. about what you're up to. A consumer suit uh, was thrown out of similar ilk, was thrown out by a judge in December, accusing Google of illegally tracking and storing geolocation data within its mobile apps. Arizona's attorney general filed a similar complaint last night. Google says, we're looking forward to setting the record straight. We'll follow Brown versus Google in the Northern District of San Jose. Now, with California. a case like this, what is the solution? You know, because just as you said, Twit LLC will use Google Analytics for analytics because that's good data, right? So what well, is yeah, the we solution? Need it. Yeah, we need it. Um uh, is it a class action? I, I presume it is, but I don't see. So let me look at the pleading. So um, usually the solution is they give a buck fifty to uh, everybody and move on. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe maybe they'd like to get Google to stop doing this. I don't see that happening. There were some headlines about you know you could get your five thousand dollars from Google. No, it's just stupid. no. <laughs> the only people who ever get rich from. Uh, these well, we never got. What was the, what's the what's the, the 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 consumer data company we were all supposed to get money from? Expe and I sign up. Equifax. Experience. No, Equifax. 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 The Equifax uh, suit. No, nobody ever got it. Hoping to get your hundred twenty-five dollars, and then they realized yeah. everybody wanted money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you greedy bastards. But nobody's getting it. <laughs> So nobody, y'all want it, so nobody's you getting it. You ruined it for everybody. <laughs> so I am kind of stunned to have to report this, but Google Plus is shutting down. <laughs> Do what now? <laughs> Apparently, remember when they shut down Google Plus? They said, well, but it'll still run in the, in the G Suite. Right. No, right. it's not even. It, they call it Google Currents. I never G knew Suite. that all this time. I, I have G Suite. I never knew. Never knew. Well, that's probably why they're shutting it down July 6th. Because <laughs> <laughs> Jeff didn't bother to tell the world no about idea. it. It does look just, I mean, that looks like uh, Google uh, Plus, doesn't it? It's who was the, who was the one code, code jockey? <laughs> There's one Sorry. guy who didn't want to. That was always the knock on Google was that Everybody wants to work on the hot new thing. Nobody wants to maintain the existing code base. Well, I remember That's when the Google Plus problem. floor, I was at Google, and it was the big secret floor. Nobody could get up there. It was a big deal. And then after they released, I got to go up to the floor. 
Whoa. Whoa. Did you get to eat and, in the you know, special cafe, Larry's Cafe? Months later, it was gone. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. But now, well, speaking, speaking of again. the cafe, Larry's Cafe, Googler is coming back to work. Box lunches. Oh! Shall we have, shall we have a little oh. violin symphony for the Googlers? Have to oh. eat box lunches? Oh, man, I've been looking forward to my pod tie and my frothy uh, nope, blender it's drink. tuna salad sandwich for you and a chocolate chip cookie and chips. <laughs> At least, but they life. give it to you still, right? You don't have to buy it. Right. No gym. And you know what? Travesty. No sleep pods. And you and I are out of luck <laughs> yeah. for our bad night's <laughs> sleep. <laughs> Uh, this a little is, afternoon uh, nap and fix us right up, but uh-uh. uh-uh. Six feet of distance so, so between here's chairs. The question. Yeah. How long before you ever see a buffet back? That's the a problem with Google is they were they were buffets like that because yeah. restaurants are going to keep. Gonna no, keep no, going no, 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 no. You get served, and same thing on cruise ships, uh, Vegas. You get served now. I mean, they might have a buffet, but you don't go to the buffet and ladle up Whole your Whole Foods, the salad bar is gone. Yeah, they, they, if anything, they'll serve you, but ideally it'll all be packaged. Well, we're in the height of the corona. Although, as as, be. as John C. Dvorak says, the fake coronavirus. Oh, no. <laughs> I guess all those 106,000 dead people are just faking it. I take it back. You're not a nihilist. <laughs> not next to him. <laughs> <laughs> he called it a chimera. Big fancy uh, word meaning fake. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess until this is over. I feel like it's over. Don't you? It's like the sun is out. It's warm. Look at the, look at the numbers in Florida and Texas. Vegas is it open. is far from over. Uh, it is bad. I can go to it Disney World. I can go to Universal Arizona. Studios. The hospitals are jammed. I think that's the thing is, is how how are the medical professionals handling it? Are they being overrun? In Arizona, they are. It depends on where it is. Uh, okay. Like New York, we you know we went through hell, and you know we'll be okay. And I just see on the TV, um, uh, New Jersey governor just lifts stay at home order. So I'm oh, sorry, I got to leave now. Um, <laughs> now that I can, now that I you can, can take right? the. Uh, Cuffs off of me. Um, so, uh, uh, but Arizona, a lot of stories, a lot of the epidemiologists in my COVID Twitter list uh, are going on about the numbers are very bad there. See, I know in the Carolinas, they started to open things back up and it seems like people are going about a normal life, if you will, just with a mask for the most part. And I figured that would be pretty much what's well, going to happen I elsewhere. I actually just read a, a story that said if we all... Uh, wore masks um we would that's the solution by the way that probably not having a buffet so it's not solution i would say it, it mitigates it yeah uh this right, is a, slows it down uh, a little. this is was just published in the uh, in science daily no that's not it oh, i got the wrong link uh it was just published in uh, acs nano the american chemical society the widespread use of face masks keeps the coronavirus reproduction number below one and prevents further waves when combined with lockdowns uh, even homemade masks with limited effectiveness can dramatically reduce transmission rates if worn by enough people. Uh, unless it's a chimera, in which case nothing can stop it. I don't know. Nothing can stop something that doesn't exist. Back <laughs> <laughs> to Google. To no more stuff. Oh, yeah. No more, no more buffets and no more sleep pods. Uh, Google drones being friendly bombs from the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Little bombs of education. Okay, okay, I bringing, dig it. Bringing books to ch school children, drones. Oh, you do you go off about how, oh, robots are scary and creepy and awful and, and awful things are going to happen. No, they're bringing learning to children. I hope they're not Google's heavy books. Drones. I Mr. Hope they're Jonas, not you little, do they have little soft bombs. carriers. Little that's, that's the wrong connotation, sir. <laughs> Don't say bomb. <laughs> okay, here you go. This is uh, this is a test. This is Google's sister company, Wing. They're gonna. This is a test to deliver library books. Kids are gonna think that they're uh, they're McDonald's Happy Meals. They're gonna get very disappointed when they see books inside. Um, 
<laughs> okay, here comes the wing. Oh, Lord. Okay. Whoop. And there goes... How big is this drone? It must yeah, be Yeah, what's massive. the aircraft? Is it a Matrice? You're the king of droning. Uh, it doesn't look like a Matrice. It's probably... I can't tell it looks, what that is. It's fairly hefty. Yeah. It ought to be really Pretty loud, boys, too, yeah. right? Let's turn on the sound yeah. so we can all hear how how loud it is. Do you have my... Uh, Give myself. Look how many women. It's got one, two, three, yeah, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, too. ten, eleven. It's got twelve props. Yeah. So I wonder how efficient that You're is for my battery right. as well as radio. I hear you loud and clear, sir. No, no, no. I mean from the drone. Oh, the sound of the drone. The sound of the oh. drone. <laughs> oh well, that's all right. We'd probably get taken down if we played the sound of the drone. What is what now it has two more propellers in front. Oh yeah, so it's, it's got fourteen propellers. Oh. Is it uh, autonomous or is there somebody? Um, Must be curious. It's going quite a distance. It also has a flashing light on it, as you know. As oh, if it were look. Oh. Here's your Now, what ball. if you're not standing out on the front porch? Does it just wait for you? You stay out there for a day just because you know the excitement. Here the comes the drone. Oh, wait, wait kid, a minute. Kid, you're supposed to look up at the sky and say thank you. They let, left, left off the part where they have to unhook it. He just took it. Oh, maybe it... Oh, now it's making it's sound. It stands for the fifth Why generation. Why is it making sound now? I guess there was no sound on that Google thing. Apparently, like Wing, which I had never heard of, uh, 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 reached a high of 1,000 deliveries a week this spring. Um, I don't know if it's books or what. I no, wonder if household I can get a goods and my meals. Taco Bell. It delivers meals from Walgreens. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> can it do Taco Bell? <laughs> well, local enough. restaurants, if you're in a southwest, a, a small part of southwest Virginia. I want Karsten to do a coast-to-coast -coast Taco Bell run for me. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's Christiansburg, Virginia. And... You know where that is, Christiansburg? No, I've never heard of that. No, place. it's a small town in southwest Virginia. Uh, they also were delivering um, household goods and meals from Walgreens and lo local restaurants. Packages up to three pounds. Oh, no, this is, sorry, that's the uh, Amazon. Pr no, Wing delivered, wait a minute. Wing received federal approval last year to deliver by drone in Virginia, beating Amazon's prime air to the public testing milestone. The company also delivers packages, which can weigh up to three pounds in Helsinki and two Australian cities. Oh, okay. Three pounds worth of books. I remember when Amazon got the approval, but I've yet to see anything that they've done with the technology. So, Jeff, do you take this as a positive, wonderful sign that the world is Yes, changing? I do. If you live in Christianburg, Virginia, Helsinki... <laughs> <laughs> it's not exactly like everywhere, and it will never be everywhere because what you—the last thing you want—is thousands of drones flying around up there. There are certain places in this country these days where I wouldn't mind dropping a few book bombs, hoping well, they'd read them. Oh, <laughs> oh, Jeff, what books would you drop? Well, I know what I'd drop in your your humankind. Humankind, yeah. Humankind. No, really, seriously, if you were going to try to educate. Uh, the people of the world. Let's just uh, let's not make it global. Just the people of the U.S. Mm -hmm. And you got three pounds to do it. <laughs> <laughs> what would you deliver? I don't know. That is that's a, that's a question. I don't know. Of course, you could also just zap mm -hmm. some Kindle books to them, but that's another. It's a lot easier. Tough <laughs> one. It's a lot easier. <laughs> Uh, have let's to be see. something with uh, Dr. Purnell, if it were me. Uh, nice sci-fi. Oh, yeah. Lucifer's Hammer, all about the Lucifer's end of the Hammer. world. Lucifer's <laughs> Hammer. <laughs> Such and a Lucifer's great book. Lucifer's Hammer, an asteroid, destroys much of the Earth's population. Not the Earth itself. The population survives. But the problem they find is nobody knows how to fix anything. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> we just got to start all over again. Because uh, we, we, and this is, you know, this is a little cause for concern. We live in a world with amazing magical technology. But would you know how to make an 8088 if, if something right. happened? Right. I, I wouldn't. Uh, who makes these things? Uh, uh, Sir, I still. I wouldn't. 
Go ahead. I, I still complain about the fact that there are people out here right now that couldn't necessarily go and change the oil in the car. You, or, you're not supposed to. You know, or, <laughs> oh, or did you ever hear my story? Did I tell the story on the show? I don't you know, so. well, I mean, things like or, or even change a tire. You know, right. I've, well, I've had to stop. Yeah, I've had to stop on the side of the road because someone didn't know how to change their tire. I just and? Like, really, you don't know how to change your tire. OK, I, I can, can do that. I, I can do that. But you, you want to hear my oil changing story? Yeah. What's that? So I was working in Chicago as a young man, and I didn't have a garage or anything. It was parked on the street, and it was November. It was getting cold in Chicago. But this guy in the city desk convinced me that I was I, I had to know how to change oil. It was not hard. Just change the oil, Jeff. You get this and this and this to change the oil. So I get under the car. I loosen the whatever the thing you loosen is so all the oil falls out in the okay. pan, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, step one, okay. Put that back on. And then I take the filter off. I take the filter off. I try to take the filter off. Oh, boy. And I mangled the filter completely. Oh, dear. Oh, boy. And as a result, I couldn't put oil in. I couldn't run <laughs> right. the car. I had to have the car towed. <laughs> yeah. Last time I ever so tried, Anthony. You don't need to be changing oil. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't need to be changing oil. All right, I, I am a I dolt. have, in the past, as a young man, changed my own oil, but it was a Volkswagen. I, I right. have no idea. Easy. How what it would take to change the oil in a modern vehicle? Certainly, you don't you don't even tune them up anymore. Um, How high does your mechanical confidence go, Amp? Would you? I could do a car. I could do a car. I can. Yeah. Well, can you uh, could you change spark plugs, Amp? Could I can do the timer. Spark plugs. Oh, I, I did all that. I used to I used to tune hard. up my Voxy. You know, I had a timing. Mm. You have the all the volt the voltmeter and the timing change, and I change the spark plugs, yeah. tune it up, change oh. the oil. But that was that was a simple vehicle in those days. These right, days, it was so much it's easier all back then. Yeah, there, but, back when you could pop the hood on the car and you could look down and right. see the actual ground yeah. <laughs> down below. Nowadays, you can't even see if if the ground is up under your car when you pop the hood because there's so much stuff going on in es there. Essentially, I just try to sell the car before I need to change the oil. <laughs> You sell your car every 3,000 miles, yeah, huh? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's about what I do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Credit to CR1 in the Jeez. chat room for that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> Duck, Duck, Go. CEO said, uh, was called to talk to authorities. Uh, and uh, Gabriel Weinberger said uh, he's spoken with state regulators, all 50 states, by the way, all 50 states now, uh, and the U.S. Justice Department. Well, they all, they all smell cash. They want mm -hmm. it. Um, Justice Department officials and state attorneys general asked Gabriel about requiring Google to give consumers alternatives to its search engine on Android devices and in the Chrome browser. We've been, Weinberg said, we've been talking to all of them about search, and all of them have asked us detailed search questions. So that's where the inquiry is going at the moment. Bloomberg's reported that the Justice Department in Texas are examining Google's dominance of the digital advertising market. Uh, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton and the Department of Justice have begun drafting a lawsuit which could be filed in the coming months could kick off one of the biggest antitrust cases in the U.S. since Microsoft in 1998. Actually, I was, when was the last antitrust case in the U.S.? Oh. I, well, I, I think it was, well, no, I think AT&T. I think he, well, he, AT he was, was, was 82 in the 80s. No, 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 no. AT&T and CNN and stuff. They went after them recently for political ends. Well, but, they, uh, okay, because... In the, I actually was looking at this earlier today. In the Wikipedia uh, article on the history of United States antitrust law, the 21st century paragraph is really short. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and really pretty much stops with Microsoft. Now, maybe that's a flaw yeah. of Wikipedia. But uh, I, don't, I don't think we've been really active in pursuing antitrust in the last uh, couple of decades. Just been threatening it. Just been threatening. Yeah, they've been investigations. So. That's and, about you know, it. I wonder how much of this ties into uh, concerns about bias uh, in social media. I, don't, I just wonder. Um, 
It's you know how much it ties into politics, politics. and moral panic. Right, and right. we continue to engage with ongoing investigations led by the Department of Justice and Texas Attorney General. Says Google, we don't have any updates or comments on speculation. The FTC previously, you may remember, investigated Google, but dropped the probe in 2013, uh, saying there's no, you know, there's nothing here. Uh, although you remember the was it the journal the Wall Street Journal had uh, communications that revealed that staffers had recommended an antitrust lawsuit but the FTC commissioners declined to go for it. Right. Wow. Uh, I don't know. I I the you know the problem. Okay, so the last example we have of this is Microsoft in 1998. It took him took them more than ten years to litigate that. The upshot of it was nothing. Never and it, mind. And in hindsight, Never mind. it was it was dopey. It just took yeah. too long to get anything important yeah. done. And it was dopey. They were mad at Microsoft for including a browser in the operating system. <gasps> right. Yes, that's going to take over the world. Shocking. Yeah. <laughs> so, see, see, but 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 two thousand twenty, Leo. In 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 two thousand, oh yeah, I got rid of my Microsoft. They're taking over the world. Yeah, they're evil. Yeah, look what happened. Yeah. <laughs> look what happened. What happened is we got more frivolous about other things for for litigation, just stupid yes. stuff. Right. <laughs> um. Good. Here's a good. Here's a happy story. Jeff, you mentioned, of course, that we wouldn't have seen the George Floyd video without Facebook and the 17 year old yes. woman who posted that on Facebook. Uh, it turns out that a lot of protests are using Google Docs because it's a good anonymous way uh, to post information about upcoming uh, protests, share lists of books on racism, a template for letters to family members and members ways of Congress. Ways to be allies. There's ways really to be good allies. Like that. Yeah. Yep. A list of funds, other resources, shared Google Docs anyone can view and anyone can edit anonymously have, according to the MIT Technology Review, become a valuable tool for grassroots organizing. I think that's Oh, cool. there's another story in the rundown that says, uh-oh, um, police could come after uh, that data, but they, they could most any platform. Right. Yeah, be careful. If you're gonna, if you think you're anonymous on the internet, you probably aren't. Well, it's actually not the police. It's so there was, the, there was the what was it called? Um, the the nasty men list. No, it wasn't nasty. Oh it, yeah, it, the media. The, the, the me too. Media bad media men list. Yeah. Oh geez, what was it called? That and so there, there was a different people, issue. Was yeah. that it wasn't didn't end up being truly anonymous, and uh, there was uh, there were libel liability. Oh, is that true? So people oh, who put yeah. their something in there weren't anonymously they thought they were anonymous but they weren't oh the um se men list um s dot 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 um yeah and the woman who started it got in you know got harassed and you know there's other stuff there uh -huh. as well hmm. well we know uh, she started it but people adding to it i thought were anonymous but maybe not anyway yeah, I think so good thing to keep in mind <laughs> which one came first was it youtube or facebook i can't remember youtube YouTube. In case. So I would say, just to argue with you, Mr. Jarvis, if Facebook didn't exist, YouTube would have still been available for people to take that footage yeah. and share yeah. it out. Social media. Social media in either case. Yeah, he's not yes. saying face. it's just Facebook, but it was Facebook in this case. But you're right. It would, could have been Twitter. could have been YouTube. Yeah. could have been Instagram. Oh, nope, nope. We were wrong. Facebook 2004, YouTube 2005. Oh. Ah. But Facebook nope. wasn't open to the public until later. Right. Right. Oh, exactly. That's right. 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 It was yeah. only for the campus. Right. Jeff Jarvis's message to Mark Zuckerberg posted on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I think it's likely that so, Mark is more likely to be able to read that anyway. Um, actually, someone from Facebook came to me because of it. Really? Well, tell us yeah. about it. What did you? Well, no, no, it wasn't a, not a big deal. Um, Zuckerberg had a, a meeting with staff and then he put up a thing on Facebook saying, uh, this is why I've chosen not to do anything about Trump's posts. Uh, this is what we're going to do instead and blah, 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 blah. And I came back and just said, you know, I just don't agree. And I think that you've, uh, oops, it's Um 
Yeah, they. I, gonna, yeah, I have the link like, here. I have it. I, I got to remember what I said. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, <laughs> um, the problem I think is that is that Zuckerberg has been putting this in two realms that aren't the right ones. One is we don't fact check the world. I agree with that. Two is we believe in freedom of expression. I believe in that. I agree with that. But what I said was your employees are coming after you saying you have to take a stand. And I've been saying that in a couple of posts. And I said you have the tool, all the tools you need, which Facebook, which Twitter has shown, right? You can you can add information. You can add a warning, which says we don't approve of this. But if you want to see it, here it is. You cannot promote it and you can kill it. I'm not saying he should kill it. I'm saying like Twitter, he should leave it up. But I think he's got to make a stand. You say, and it, you he, say he, should, he should model good behavior. That's the main thing, right? So the, the good behavior, this is Facebook, which is about conversation. And if, you, if a friend of yours comes along and says something awful or racist or inciting or whatever, then you should call them on it. Because otherwise, you're, you, that, then that's where the new norm is. So right. it's up to all of us to call people on bad stuff. I, and it's also then up to Facebook, too. I kind of like that because it's not saying Facebook has to be an arbiter of truth. Right. Or Facebook has to decide, you know, it, that's an untenable position. No, no company should be put in that position. No government should. In fact, that's why the founders said, let's not have, let's have the First Amendment. Let's not put the government in that position. But I agree with you. They have some responsibility. As you point out, they have... You know the 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 algorithm does in effect make, give them editorial some editorial control of what you see and what you don't see. So they have some responsibility. This is a kind of a nice middle ground. Model good behavior, and it doesn't yeah, have to be good behavior we can all agree on. It doesn't no. have to be this is wrong. This post is untruthful. It's merely what you would say to a neighbor if they said something appalling. You would it's say, "Mark's garden party." Hold on, wait right. a minute. That's see. not right. Right. That's, but can that's he do it line. without? Without the weight of, you know, it has to look like a friend, a neighbor said it, as opposed well, to. Well, so this is the conversation I had with somebody who just, who just, I, you know, somebody I met once, but I hadn't talked to in a couple of years. Just came in and said, "I want to understand what you're saying." So it was a really neat discussion we had over the weekend, and and nothing I'm sure will come of it, but but it was a nice conversation. And so what this person was asking me was, is it Mark speaking or is it Facebook speaking? He said, Mark gave a speech at Georgetown and said kind of all this. Right. And I said, no, hmm. it's got to be Facebook. It's got to appear. It's, it's not Mark a Mark speech. It's got to appear with that item to say this person, this, per, this powerful person is inciting violence. And we want to say we don't stand with that. I like that. Because if you don't. I and like then, that. and that's the same we thing would all agree. Friends. Every individual should do that, right? Yes. You're complicit yes. to racism and if you don't say something when somebody right. says exactly. something racist. Then you're I don't think complicit. he's asking for a whole lot here, personally. I'm not. I think that's the right thing. And not only, not only more than that, I'll get behind you. I'll say that's the right thing to do. And it and it's just simply saying, look, you know, uh, we don't agree with that. That's not right. That's racist. Or that's And just like you said, Ms. Laporte, if this was something that happened in person, you know, you were, say, you out at the park it. or what yeah. have you. and It'd be, it, wrong, it'd be wrong not to. Right. Yeah. So it's wrong for Facebook not to. I think that that's, that's fair. It is a very reasonable stance. And, and, it, and it also does not require them to do it. They don't have to disapprove of everything on the platform. Right? right. This has impact. It has virality. It's from power. There's a whole bunch of tests they can put it to to say, is this worth us talking about? Yeah. Now, if it's just something they don't like, they can. St there are full rights to kill it, to bury it, to not promote it, and all that. But they know this is going to be seen. Here's what I don't like about it, because it's if you do it as Facebook, it's somewhat an anonymous, you know, faceless group of editorial people. I would like to see a name on it. Um, yeah, you could have, have a chief ethicist. You could have yeah. an ethicist of Facebook. It doesn't have to be Marx. It could be that committee that they. It doesn't have to be Marx, but somebody. It should be somebody. Somebody Even. you can respond to. Well, that's the other argument I've had with them. I've, I've, I've uh, said to them in conversations I've had about 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 um, regulation and other things. Uh, you know, after I did my Twitter COVID list, uh, Bitly slash COVID Twitter list. Um, you know, Facebook is trying to go with institutions, newspapers, WHO. I said, you're Facebook. You need human beings. You need researchers and doctors and geneticists and human beings. We can start to understand, listen to, respect, 
um, and, and, and believe in their authority. You should be amplifying the expertise of individuals. So I agree with you, Leo. I think that it should be some kind of human voice that says, it's here, but you just ought to know that we think this is not the right way to behave. I like that. 100%. I yeah, I don't have a problem. With you know that. who should do it? I'm, I'm, I'm serious about what I'm going to say. Cheryl. You know the, vo the voice that I would channel for that? Who? His aunt. Yeah. His aunt is always a very yeah. reasonable person. Yeah, you can't get mad at it. Calm. <laughs> I, I try um, to be. I try yeah, to you, be. Yeah, you are. You are. You can't get um, mad at it. <laughs> uh, okay. In fact, I would just go, oh, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm well, <laughs> right. I mean, because Ann, Ann's, Ann's called me out once or twice, but extremely respectfully, gently, right? Um, that's, the, that's, what you, that's what you want to model. Now, somebody in the chat room is saying it's not going to help. No, you can't change people by calling them names. This is not with the necessarily with the intent of changing the poster's no. post. This is right. just to merely call it out, which you yeah, would expect in civilized society would happen. Right. If uh, this did again, not, if this wasn't behavior. on a screen, if this wasn't on a phone or on a computer, what would what would the reaction be? You yeah, know, that's how I that's how I would look at it. If this was out here in your in your neighborhood, right out there in the streets, yeah. just like you said, Mr. Laporte talking to the neighbor, what would the reaction be? How would you go about that? And you it's might no different. You might, as a Facebook user, be reading it and disagree and say, No, no, I, I think that's Fine. appropriate. And maybe even add a comment saying, I think it's appropriate. Uh, or I don't get why that's racist, or I don't get why that's violent or whatever. Um, that's the conversation. That's actually good. That's what you want. Right, you want to you want to you want to have that. It's not about two sides; it's about the company having its own soul. I mean, F Facebook is controlled by Mark Zuckerberg, so it is his decision to what he stands for and what the company stands for become co-equal. But his employees are telling him, "You better stand for something here." And you know, if I'm called a friend of Facebook and Google and Twitter, fine. Then it's your friends telling you, "You ought to stand for something." Here. I guess that's really what mm -hmm. Jack Dorsey did. Yes, and and you look at if if you're at Facebook, it's tempting to say, oh, it's just too big, it's uh, we can't be put in the position of of judging every post and having true, but we're true. not asking that, we're not saying that, right? We're saying stand for something and put that into the conversation because you already right. are, you're doing it imperceptibly, you're doing it anonymously, so maybe, you know, because you've already taken that responsibility, you have a, for more responsibility. You have you have influence whether they want to believe it or not. God, so yes, why right? not use it? Yeah. And me, man, and you know what? This is something we should be aware of. It, we may not agree with what they choose to say. True. Right. Right. Now he, yeah, he might come along and say, "No, I'm sorry. It's not as I'm. I'm going to say out loud, this is not incitement, and I support it. He can do that, and that's okay. But I don't. I don't that's, think he would. But uh, that's well, taken but, aside. But that's okay. Yeah, it is. Uh, that starts the conversation, and really, that's the problem we have right now: is we've got polar opposites and no and no conversation at all happening. This is why I keep arguing that Facebook lacks a north star. Yes, the oversight that's a good board point. is supporting is going to uh, adjudicate a statute book without a constitution. And, uh, and and Twitter doesn't fully have it yet either. But like England, it's having an unwritten constitution and it starts to write it now by its actions. Yeah. Facebook has statutes. No breasts. We'll be happy to tell you no breasts, but incitement of violence? Eh. Well, if your president is okay, right? So mm. that's they're getting they're getting their knickers and knots there. Whereas mm. if they said we stand for respectful conversation, we stand for not inciting things and making them worse in society. We stand for dialogue that is respectful, informed, and, and we're gonna call it out exactly when we see it. And when we see somebody going against it, we're going to say that's Had they that's done that in the Philippines with Duterte, had they done that in Myanmar, would it have made a difference? Maybe not, but you would feel a lot they better could stand about up Facebook. Proud. Exactly. They could stand up a lot prouder. And so so when I wrote a post about this a week ago, which we think we talked about last week, um, you know, I said, should I have spoken up this way in the Philippines and Myanmar? Yes, I should have. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very much like Martin Niemöller. First they came for the Philippines yeah. and I didn't do anything. And then they came yeah. for the, me and Martha did everything. You know, now they come for us here in the U.S. Well, okay, now I'm doing something. So guilty. Guilty. Yeah. Good. Jeff, I think you finally, we've, after three years of chewing on this, we've come up with a solution. that I Stacy's not going to believe it. 
<laughs> She's not going to believe it. No. Stacy, Stacy, no. we came up with something. What do you think? She's going to say, That's, <laughs> your guys are full of it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? We came up with something. We could see her face now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, I think she, I think this is what I like about it is it, it uh, it's it's kind of ethically right without putting Facebook in the big chair saying this is oh, this is not true this is not true this goes this doesn't go I don't think that's right. the right thing to do either. Right. So you, and again, you're Stacey, not talking about the world. Even you're talking about the use of you, Facebook. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. What we what what kind of world do we want here? We want a world here where people are not going to be yelling at each other, where, where people are going to be trying to be constructive, where they're trying to be respectful, where they're not going to incite hatred. Yes. That's what yes. our world is. Sundar Pichai was one of the many speakers. Uh, did you see the uh, 2020 commencement uh, address, Dear Class of 2020? This is so, this, this is so touching uh, to me. Um, they did a, a commencement celebration for all the poor high school kids and I guess co college kids graduating without getting to walk, without getting to do anything. Um, they had everybody from President Obama, Michelle Obama. I love this. Here's Lizzo playing the flute with the, uh, with the was it the L.A. No, Philharmonic? <laughs> Watch out. Carson's yelling right now that you're playing a YouTube video. I yeah. played two notes. You got to you gotta see. Really awesome. Really awesome. And then they, what I, I like, this is just beautiful. What I like is that they uh, they broke out all of the different, uh, there's a playlist so you can see the, the highlights. Cool. If, if you don't want to watch the whole thing, you can see I Katie Perry. Barack. It's worth, boy, you know, everybody had something to say. I thought it was quite uh, beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. And it's everybody from Lady Gaga uh, to Mariah Carey <laughs> to, wait, I got to watch that. Schitt's Creek featuring Mariah Carey. That's going to be interesting. Alicia Keys. <laughs> I think Lizzo with the New York was a New York Philharmonic. That's hysterical. Um, Phineas remixed U2's Beautiful Day. This is all the stuff, wow. you know, if, if I were a high school senior, I'd want to God, hear. this graduation goes on forever. Well, yeah, that's why it's good they broke it out into a playlist. Look at this. It just wow. everybody, oh, everybody. There's John. I thought, I thought John Green. My son's was long. My daughter's. <laughs> um, but Sundar Pichai was one of the uh, the people. The CEO is he now? Do we have to say CEO of Alphabet and Google? I, I thought so. just Alphabet was enough because Alphabet he encompasses Google. Google. His title on the blog is the keyword blog CEO of Google and Alphabet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Um, he said, I never imagined I'd be giving a commencement speech with no live audience from my backyard. <laughs> I imagine that every day, Sundar. Uh, Do you dress up or not? <laughs> no, he's wearing like a baseball day. jacket, which is pretty funny. Uh, it's probably a Google baseball jacket. So he says, let me skip right to the end of the speech and the end uh, and tell you what happens. You will prevail. This is not really the end of the speech, so don't get too excited. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> the reason I know you'll prevail is because so many others have done it before you. The class of 1920 graduated into the end of the pan uh, the another deadly pandemic. The class of 1970 graduated in the midst of the Vietnam War. My class, I was class of 73. Um, same thing. Class of 2001 graduated just months before 9/11. So be hopeful. It's very conventional for every generation to underestimate the potential of the following one because they don't realize the progress of one generation becomes the foundational premise for the next. And it takes a new set of people to come along and realize all the possibilities. You'd probably get along great with him, Jeff Jarvis, you optimist, you. Yeah. <laughs> the great thing about the speech that I loved is that he said that his father spent a year's salary to buy the airplane ticket for him to go to Stanford. Isn't that amazing? That's it was insane. his first wow. time ever on a plane. He says, but when I eventually landed in California, things weren't as I imagined. America was expensive. A phone call back Especially to there. A phone call back home <laughs> was more than two dollars a minute. A backpack cost the same as my dad's monthly salary in India. And for all the talk about warm California beaches, the water was freezing cold. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, yeah. There he is. Uh, Sundar is a graduate student at uh, at Stanford. 
A bright spot for me during this time was computing. For the first time in my life, I could use a computer whenever I wanted to. It completely blew wow. my mind. So, yeah, it's this is a good speech, I have to say. I thought this was... All the speeches see, were good. See. But, you know, I'll be honest. If you're speaking to a graduating class of 2020, you got to be hopeful because you can't tell them the truth. That yeah, would that'd be depressing. <laughs> I was going to say, which is? What is the truth? <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I feel my kids graduated from college last year. They are, this is the worst possible time. I know this is not the pandemic of 20, 1920. This is not uh, those of us graduating in you know, the Vietnam era faced yeah. with the draft. This is far worse. Yeah. Now, if you're, if you're a black man graduating... It's not. It's just another another century another of oppression Rappy. and violence. Yeah, uh, I will say this. I, I, you know, we were talking pre-show, you know, how I attended a local peaceful protest in March um, over the weekend. And a detail that I left out was that was put together by a student here uh -huh. at Sonoma State. Uh, yeah, no so one great. else. This yeah. was this was all a student. And it was beautifully done. And I can remember uh, speaking there and I mentioned to my family, I said, you know what? I know I've given the kids of today a hard time with how they don't know how to change a tire or change their own oil like Mr. Jarvis. But seeing <laughs> hey, rub it in. <laughs> rub it in. <laughs> but seeing that a, that a, a teenager or a young, young, young person could put together a beautiful rally and a beautiful, peaceful protest like that, that gave me hope, you know, that yeah. maybe these, yeah. these kids are trying to gear up and, and make things better on this planet. By the time we're yeah. finished with the show, we're going to make Leo just, just feel all <laughs> huggy. And warm. I, I actually, <laughs> I actually, of all the bad things that have happened in this, yeah. in this bad timeline that we somehow got into, the protests have given me such hope because because yeah. yeah. we have it has been a bad 400 years yeah yeah and and i have to say you know i remember in waking up in 1968 to my clock radio we you know we bobby had just been shot and then hearing that mlk was shot yeah and i just felt like oh my god the it's it's the worst this is the worst ever and yeah. there've been and you know and, and trayvon martin and yep. Eric Garner, and just it just keeps happening. And then when we saw the video of George Floyd, it just keeps happening. But this reaction has been quantitatively and qualitatively different than totally I, anything different. I can remember. Even yes. the marches, and my dad w marched uh, in the March on Washington in 1968 when Martin Luther King gave that great speech. He was there. He was went on, got on the buses and went there from Rhode Island. And, How cool and, is that? and I remember marching uh, for racial equality and marching against the war in Vietnam as a young man. This is so different and seems to be almost a universal feeling of we've this time we got to do. We can't let yeah. this keep happening. So for the first time ever, I almost don't want to feel hope because my yeah. hopes have been dashed so many times. But for the first right. time ever, I feel like maybe... I see, there's this little bit of movement. Yeah, there's, and there's you're, age, you're ageless, um, <laughs> but uh, I, I have no idea how old you are. Um, I'm in my forties. I'll say that. So, because my, because my, well, I'll, 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 I'll do. I'm the old man, <laughs> uh, even older than Leo. Not much. And, uh, no, <laughs> not much. Um, and, and I wrote a piece for an Irish newspaper on Sunday that this was all the last stand of the old white man. And I say that as one. Mm -hmm. And I remember, you know, the 60s when I grew up in 68, I'm reliving that now. And I feel like we haven't learned anything since. So that's my kind I mean, of It feels very much like 1968. I agree. I can remember. Right. You can remember it, too. Watching the Chicago Democratic Convention. Right. And it looked so much the same police with riot gear, the same batons wailing on protesters. It looks so similar. Yeah. You have political strife. You have uh, racial gas. strife. You have police violence. You have rocket shots. So my question to you, Ann, is that's my memory of, of kind of the early days of the fight. Mm -hmm. What sticks in your mind from your youth, uh, given your generation younger than we are, um, the, uh, 
is there is there is there an event? There was one event that I did not attend um, back in '95 or '96, and it was that Million Man March. Oh yeah, in DC. I did not something. attend uh, because I, quite frankly, I wasn't interested. And um, I remember some of my teammates were wanting to go, and they did go. Uh, but before that, I have memories of KKK parades oh, in God. South Carolina. Oh, God. You know, I, I remember seeing stuff oh, like God. that pretty regularly, you know. But with all of that going on, I can remember looking at the resilience of my mother and my father and some of my other family mm-hmm. members that said, you know what, get your crap together, get to work and be a better person in the story. That's you know? what I loved. Uh, Cornell Wilde was on the CNN uh, last night. It actually made Anderson Cooper cry. And, and then I, this, and it ties to uh, at the end of John Oliver's This Week Tonight, he mm-hmm. played a riveting clip from a black woman saying, you never saw a black KKK. You broke the social contract, but, but, but we didn't, we didn't riot. I mean, we, well, we didn't turn on you. We Mm -hmm. just kept on. And I, it it was so moving. The Anderson Cooper was, was bawling as, as was I, Uh because of the beautiful spirit and love coming from the black community in the face of such hate yeah. is so inspiring. And I just hope, you know, by the way, good news, this just happened. Amazon has now agreed to ban the use of its face recognition technology for a oh, year. Hallelujah. This, of course, uh, following IBM saying we're not going to do it anymore because, of course, all of this face recognition technology is uh, very much biased against people of color. Yeah. And so now that they're going to ban it, let's hope that they're saying, you know what, we're going to bring in some some more teammates that can help with this, that can help make it better. That, yep. you know, yep. But more importantly to me, this is Amazon, which fought this tooth and nail, finally yeah. realizing, you know what, the tide is turning. We can't, I need a North Star. Yeah. We can't yeah. keep doing this. Maybe I'm a cynic. Maybe it's because it's bad for business. Oh, no, we better do this. Maybe because they did find they're a little bit of conscious. I don't conscious. I don't know, but uh, uh, that's why I feel like there's hope. Mm. For the first time in my lifetime, there may be some hope. Actually, that's not true because I had hope in the in the early seventies, late sixties, early seventies that maybe we could change things. There was mm-hmm. that sense. But then, but then our generation screwed it up. Our generation didn't do the things that we promised we were going to do. Our generation got in control. Our generation of old white men got in control and and didn't didn't do anything. We that's that's what depresses me about this is that it feels the fact that it feels so much like sixty eight means that there should have been a step change. Not this and it time. Hasn't been. So we we hope and pray and are and need to commit to making a step change. There was a fascinating so so the editor of Bon Appetit had to resign. Because he had a, he was in brown face in a photo that he was found in social media. He and his wife years ago pretended yeah, to be Puerto Rican. That. Yeah. <laughs> so the staff of Bon Appetit just put up a letter to the public that I think is very good, and and confesses the sins of the magazine and and has concrete things that they say that they're going to do. Uh, uh, you know, one That's thing good. that we see in journalism all the time is is an editor or a professor says, oh, that story is not big enough. It's just a trend. It's just you, you, you and your people. Um, uh, that's the kind of stuff that went on. And they used low-level people underpaid at Bon Appetit to be in video so they could look better. And they didn't pay them. They, they didn't pay them. They didn't pay the black people. They only paid the white people. It's like, <laughs> a, it, it's like so appalling. Right, <laughs> so appalling. Oh my God! So and I just want to it. say right now, Aunt, we're going to start paying you because <laughs> all right, all right. I appreciate it. <laughs> it's wrong. No, I. You know, I. I love Epicurious, which is part of theirs, uh, part yeah. of their family, and I had no idea. And that is a. It, I am so glad. Uh, this is the a long overdue apology, and where we go from so here. So this is really good, and I think so. Yeah, what good. I tweeted was that it's not just. Bon Appetit. It's journalism. It's journalism schools. It's my journalism school. It's we us. have work to do. It's us. It's us. 
And this had yeah, concrete things thing. to do. Then the president of Connie Nast came with his response was just more PR blather. Uh, the model should have been to go down everything that that staff said and said, yes, we're going to do it. And here's when we're going to do it. And it should have been that. Instead, it was just, oh, we're going to have a lot of, uh, 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 we're going to have better uh, discussions. Platitudes. You know, um, it's on platitudes. Wesley Faulkner yep, exactly. was on Twitter on Sunday, and I was talking about Tim Cook's beautiful uh, letter to the public that's on Apple.com about racism. And he said, well, that was okay, but I really preferred Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella's letter because Satya said, it's us. We take yep. responsibility. Yep. Here's what we are going to do. And that really, you need to say that. You need to say, okay, we blew it. And here's what we're going to do. Here's how we're going to make it better. And yeah. uh, and I think, it, I hope this isn't just PR from a bunch of companies. Tom well, a lot of them doing that. Well, sometimes, you know, sometimes a desire to preserve the bottom line pushes you in the right direction. Yeah, yeah, and you know yeah. how it is if you if you don't feel like smiling, but you smile, sometimes you kind of start to feel better anyway. Maybe it'll be, maybe that's the uh, upshot of it. But I'm just thrilled to see Amazon saying, okay, we're going to step back on recognition. That That is good, though. But uh, again, I have no problem with the idea and technology of facial recognition because that could help things with uh, from an efficiency standpoint, depending on what your business model is. But when it comes time to train these systems, you need to have people that are just not sitting in a box, people that are uh, that are a little more well-rounded and can see it from all different perspectives, you know, not just mm -hmm. just some white guy from San Francisco, yep. you know. Speaking of white guys from San Francisco, uh, Jack Dorsey's made Juneteenth a permanent company holiday. Uh, Juneteenth, which is on June 14th. Symbolic, but good symbolism. It's a big symbol, you know. Yeah. Uh, June 14th is the uh, anniversary of, uh, not of the, I always thought it was the Emancipation Proclamation. It's not. It's no. at the end of the Civil War and the final actual freeing. It was of the, the reading of it. It was slave the, release. The release of the yeah, slaves. Was yeah. Uh, so that's coming up in four days and it will be celebrated. I'm sorry. June nineteenth, I said the fourteenth. It's coming up in nine days. Yes, the nineteenth. Sorry, Juneteenth. Apologize. Yeah, Juneteenth. Um, so they're going to make that a company holiday in the U.S. I think that's great. Maybe take some time for education as well as uh, barbecuing. Yep. Uh, all right. Let's uh, let's take a break because there's more to talk about. But I what I like to do. There's a lot more to talk about. Uh, what I like to do at this point, we got a change log coming up. We will get to that. Is give both you and Jeff a chance, Ant, to uh, pick a story that I so we get make sure we get everything that you wanted to talk about in. So why, sure, don't, why sure. don't we think about what you want to talk about, both of you? And uh, well, I, we got to think, Ant. We got to think. You don't have to think. <laughs> yeah. you just go. Mm, wave oh, your okay. finger around and point. <laughs> Random number <laughs> generator. Throw a dart. I don't care how you come up with it. I'll do line 91, whatever's on it. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, and we do pay Ant. I'm sorry. If, if anybody believes that we didn't, yeah. I apologize. Yes, I, I do Ant get paid. Enough. I am happy, happy, happy employee of Twitch. Uh, there's actually people in the chat room who are saying, he doesn't no. get paid? He doesn't oh, know. Geez. Oh, my God. <laughs> I am a happy Got to be careful employee. what you say in the world. Okay. Save us from the literal minded. <laughs> <laughs> well, people might believe it. it, it you know, who would have believed Bon Appetit was not paying black people yeah. for their videos, yeah. but was paying the white people for the videos? I mean, who would have believed true, that? True, 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 true. So right. I understand. Right. I look like an old, biased old white man. <laughs> I say white. <laughs> Uh, Please don't do that. I know it's not good. It's <laughs> not good. Not I'm thrilled to see the U.S. Navy and the Marines take down the Confederate battle flag everywhere. Uh, NASCAR, NASCAR, just that's a shock. I yeah. every time I see, uh, start, what is it? What was that? Uh, uh, you know, the the Daisy Dukes, the uh, Dukes of Hazard. Every Dukes time Hazard. with the battle mm -hmm. flag on that car, I think. Mm, Yep, uh, that's a big part of NASCAR. I'm so shocked, but you that's know, what but I mean. I feel like that the, the, the times might be changing. Let me say this about NASCAR. Uh, you know, I used to watch NASCAR a lot because of where I'm from, right. and my grandfather 
was a mechanic for most pretty much all of my life. So he talked about cars and when the races would come on him and his friend community of friends or whatever, they would watch the races, but they didn't care who won. They cared about what car won. Was it a Chevrolet? Was it a Ford? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That kind of thing. So I, 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 I understood that. Now you fast forward 20 years and there's still a little bit of that in NASCAR. Fast forward another 10 years. Not so much of that. NASCAR has changed a lot where the drivers are not right. necessarily from Rockingham, North Carolina or right. or, or uh, Greenville, South Carolina. A lot of them are coming from Sonoma, California right. and stuff like that. It's you know? more so, like F1 or uh, other kinds right. of racing. It's more about the... The, the star drivers and the teams and the, yeah. It's not as yeah. regional as it used to be. I think, you know, a I lot of those tracks closed down because it, comes, it just wasn't selling. It comes from the roots of NASCAR, which is, you know, right. some good old boy brought his car with the Confederate battle flag on the hood and said, let's race. <laughs> let's, right. Yeah, Moon, let's race. Yeah. Moonshining on the beaches of that's Daytona. Right. That's you know, right. that, that's, yeah. that's all that's it was. Right. That's right. But yeah, I, if for them to have the flags uh, removed, that's shocking. That doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me because it's not the same NASCAR. Had they tried that maybe 15 years oh, ago, it would have been a mess. Uh, it would have been a mess. Well, it is. It is. Uh, at least it was until recently. That I think it probably still is the fastest growing sport in America. So uh, while we're on, is no, it? Uh, they're not doing as well as they used to. They're they're trying. Oh, okay, that's just trying. Okay. While we're on sports, I mean, uh, tip of the hat oh, great. to the Reverend Al Sharpton. I never get taught sports on Twit. What? <laughs> well, you never, I, you, I never talk sports because I don't know are exactly you, about are you? I got to ask, are you going through withdrawal? This must be very t- – this is the hardest part of quarantine, isn't it? Well, for me, it's okay because when football is in off season, I watch a lot of sports reruns. So right. I watch old football games. Right. So I, I always get my fix. I'm you're always okay with in that. T- mm-hmm. but, but you're not going to feel so good come fall. <laughs> I hope I hope I'm feeling good come fall. But. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, that, that, that was that was a gritted teeth. Uh, I better be. Uh, <laughs> I better be. That's all I so, um, Al Sharpton from the pulpit in the um, funeral, saying it is time to make up to Colin Kaepernick. It's not enough to, to make a YouTube Absolutely. video saying, "Oh, sorry." Absolutely, he was this this, right. this man created the symbol of a movement. He was right. I have thoughts on that and people are going to disagree with me on it. I, yes, the NFL should, um, go to him and say, look, yeah, we, we screwed up. We were totally, totally, totally wrong. And there are some people that are going to say they should, they should have this big old campaign announcement, yada, yada, yada. I think that's something that should be done in private with, maybe two witnesses, if you will, the same way they went about it with the court case and the settlement and things like that. Um, because I don't personally, I don't think it should be as showman like on television to where it looks like it was just a PR stuff yeah, using, like, using him the other way. Yeah. 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 Good right. Point. So I say do it, but do it to where there's maybe two witnesses, no cameras that way, you know, it's yep. sincere or not, or at least it, yep. for me, it gives you a better sense of it being sincere and not being in the public eye of all of the flashing lights and cameras and things like that, because they totally did uh, screw this up and they were totally wrong on this because what he did, um, he was just doing a peaceful protest. People are going to Mm -hmm. think that he was disrespecting the flag. It had nothing to do with the flag. Uh, It was all about the police brutality and the idea came from a military veteran yeah. to kneel. Colin asked, want- what would be a respectful way? Right. So protest. he wanted to do it, you yeah. know, and out of respect for the for the military and respect for, you know, the community. But he was blackballed and openly blackballed because there are a ton of quarterbacks in the NFL yes. that don't ever get to play because they're, they're either a backup or they're just, you know, a role player and on the practice squad he could very easily be on a practice squad somewhere at the very least, but he actually could start somewhere too. There's a lot of bad quarterback play. He took us to the Super Bowl. I'm not, I still have my number seven 49ers right. jersey. I should start wearing that with pride. Right. Um, right. Well, since, since you're the only real man and jock here, um, uh, <laughs> 
Oh, you're, you're as, almost as bad as I am. I'm going to stop paying this guy. I'm completely. <laughs> uh, uh, how long has it been since he's played? And is there any chance that he still can have physical mojo to be able to, if he, if he started, if we, if we're back in the fall, um, he could play. Can he possibly be in shape to play? He could play. Yeah. He could play. He, they guys, had a tr they had a camp for him. Train. They had an audition yeah. camp for him not so long ago. I, I, nobody yeah, hired mm -hmm. him at that time. I think still, probably because of his political. Uh, right, it was still political, yeah. Dan. But he's he's clearly enough in shape to 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 Good. make camp. You know. Yes. But a lot of those Good. guys are they they work out so often because it's just, as I was telling my family members, when it comes to playing sports, you get a certain discipline, and it just doesn't leave. You just wake up for me. I, I, I can't help but to do push-ups when a commercial comes on, on TV. It's just there, yeah. you know? So these people, they're, they're just, they're in shape. So you don't have to worry about that. Richard Sherman says Kaepernick could still play at the highest level and deserves a job. I wouldn't doubt it at all. Good. Yeah. And darn it. He's only 32. He's not, I mean, you know, he played for six seasons, uh, for the Niners. I, th you know, he was, I, I think the last game he played was in that Super Bowl. I can't remember if he got to play uh, after that. I think he played one one more after that, but lost his starting job, if right. I remember right. I think so. Your yeah. wife would know more than me. She's an actual 49er. <laughs> she was, you know what's ironic? <laughs> I remember uh, going to a preseason game uh, in that 2016 season, and Kaepernick, you know, was, okay, a little late in the game, so he wasn't playing against the first stringers, but he took the ball and ran – 70 yards for a touchdown and, yep. I, and I said wow I yeah, like this guy <laughs> I like this guy I was really thrilled uh when he got to start and he really mm -hmm. played very well in the last few games but she was never a fan <laughs> mm -hmm. she said no he's he doesn't do his progressions fast enough he's not he's not as alert on the field as he needs to be she's tough though and at that time, I I have to agree with her yeah. from that standpoint because playing that position, you can't just tuck it and run yeah. every single time yeah. because you want to have some longevity and be able to play next week. So limit those hits, yeah. go through your progressions. Yeah, and she doesn't like uh, she doesn't like the new guy either. So <laughs> who also <laughs> took us to the Super Bowl? This is tough. She's tough. She's really tough. He I has somewhat that. of the same uh, problem. So. Uh, no, Kaepernick her. was a free agent that season, and no one signed him because of the politics. Oh, the politics. Oh. And he, I mean, there was no question. Here's a guy, came on halfway through a season, took a team to the Super Bowl, and he doesn't get signed? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's owed back pay by the NFL. Well, they, they settled. I don't, I, no one knows how much for, but I imagine the NFL gave him, I hope the NFL gave him some significant amount of money, but... Uh, that's not really the point. Yeah, they settled for a decent amount. Mark Garagos is his lawyer, and I believe they talked about it on his podcast. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. Ooh. You're not supposed to, of course. Yeah. Right. Um, it's one of those deals. Either. All right. I thank you, Amp, for that um, yeah. sports uh, um, sport remedial ball, lesson for sport me. Sportball fascinating to me. We. We need a bumper. We need a bumper for a sports segment. We have now. a bumper. Can you get it for us, John? Do you have the football bumper? Oh, it's, is it Jeff or John? It's Jeff. I can't tell with a mask. Mr. Brockman. <laughs> Mr. Brockman. Mr. Brockman is in the house, and we used to have a, a nice little football bumper. Kevin would know how to do it. <laughs> so mean. Oh, he's mean. That's so mean. Oh. Is that mean? Jeff, turn off his camera. Ever tell him a story yeah. about getting a vasectomy? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Guess I won't. I'm 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 lying on the table. You're awake when you get a vasectomy. I'm lying on the table. Well, I gotta hear this. Ah! There, there, there it is. is. <laughs> and the doctor's starting to sweat a little bit. He can't. He's something. Yeah. He can't quite. He got half of it done, but not the other half. He can't quite. And my wife at the time said, "It's okay. We'll hire. We'll we'll go get a urologist, and he he can finish the job." And the doctor jumped. Man, he fixed it. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> that right. was a good trick. That was a good motivation. Trick. He played three seasons after the Super Bowl. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, 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 wait. Your wife insults the doctor as he's got a knife on you down there. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't. I, don't. <laughs> I think something else was happening. Come to think of it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Come to think of it, what was she thinking? 
<laughs> she was thinking money talk and sh walks. She, she, she humbled him. She humbled him. Um, let me get that right. Cause I, I thought that that, okay. I thought he played the following year, but ended up losing his starting job. Yeah, he must have played because he wasn't taking a knee after the Super Bowl appearance, right? Right. So, um, I can't he, remember. He started, he started uh, taking a knee in 2016. Um, and at that point, he became a free agent after the season, but went unsigned. So his Super Bowl was 2012. So, yeah, he played. I'm sorry. I apologize. Yeah, because Alex Smith got a concussion, um, and Kaepernick took oh, over. Oh, Alex and Smith! Then, yeah, I remember Utah. that. And he took the Niners in the 2012 season. See, that was in 20. That's why it's confusing. The 2012 mm -hmm. season, Super Bowls in 2013, and that Kaepernick played in 2013, and he played for three more years. But he was uh, a free agent, and then no one hired him mm -hmm. uh, because in 2016 he started taking a knee. Anyway, enough history. Enough about my vasectomy. Let's move on. <laughs> Didn't we have a sponsor you wanted to thank? Well, they don't want to be here now after like, that. Are yeah. you kidding? They're saying, I'm trying to give them a little buffer. Yeah, is it hot uh, where you are uh, now, Ann? Is it? Uh, yeah. Just just a little. How'd you like to? Uh, how'd you like to get a copy of Doom on your Chromebook? Look at that. Oh, Doom or Doom Two. Google.com/slash Chromebooks/slash Perks. Here's some Chromebook perks. Wow. You can get Doom and Doom 2. It's only a $5 value. Don't get too excited. <laughs> <laughs> but even still, though, when you think about it, that's that's some nice horsepower being able to push Could, graphics thinking like that, that. Yeah, the, the Chromebook could play it even is impressive, yeah. That's yeah. that's that's pretty daggone yeah. cool. Yeah. Also, uh, Fallout Shelter, The Elder Scrolls Legends, uh, Stardew Valley, Calm Premium for 30 days. Lineage 2. Oh, there's a lot of perks in here. Wow, that's nice. There's something for you, uh, Aunt VSCO. You got a year's membership at VSCO. Oh, I remember that. Little, remember them, um, Visco? Remember those? Yeah, lots of filters. Cool yes, filters. that's right. I'm hoping for a new Pixel book come in the fall. There was, there was speculation. Uh, some of the things they're seeing go by with the code names and the timing. It's been three years this fall. Oh, man. Can you Since believe it? Mr. Three Jarvis, years. what's going to do it for you this year, though? What's going to, what's it going to take? Because um, you, you're still waiting and holding out, and there are plenty I'm, of I'm hoping for a pixel book. My, key, my keyboard's getting a little wonky right now. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I'll make it, but I'm hoping for, for a pixel book, full pixel so book. So you want in a Google-branded hardware. I want that. I love my pixel book. I think they do a good okay. job. Okay. I'm just checking so, Kevin Tofel's yep. uh, about Chromebooks.com to see if there's any any rumors we ought to know about. That is the place to go. Yeah, yeah I don't see anything. Boy, it no, does seem one rumor like out there. it just seem like it's time, isn't it? I have my Pixelbook right here. I really, it's a very nice device. Do your boys use uh, Chromebooks in school, uh, Aunt or Yes, sir. They do. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think it's a great school computer. Honestly, so did uh, so did Michael. Yeah, it works totally fine. And then when they get home, they can just log into any session on any computer. Right. You know, and they they need to stuff. Yeah. yeah, I think that's smart. All right, I put the Chrome Unbox story in the uh, chat on the rundown. Oh, good. All right, we'll talk about that when we come back. First, a word from the folks who pay for this lovely studio, the LastPass Studios, here in beautiful... In beautiful Petaluma, California, LastPass. Everybody knows LastPass is a password manager, but really it's so much more. We use LastPass. I've used LastPass personally for more than 10 years. Uh, so does so does pretty much everybody I know, including our own security guru, Steve Gibson. Now, Steve, he's a he's a tough audience. He had to actually interview the guy who wrote it, Joe Segrist, get uh, get a look at the code and everything. But that's that's when Steve said two thumbs up. I give it my certification, the Gibson seal of approval. He's doing everything right. Uh, that was some years ago. We did a whole episode on uh, how LastPass works. We started using LastPass for business, the enterprise version, a few years ago when one of, 
one of our engineers put all the passwords on a public web page because he couldn't remember them. I thought, I gotta help you. <laughs> We're gonna get LastPass. It's gone a lot farther. In fact, I'm so glad we use LastPass Enterprise because as we send employees home, suddenly they're working from home. They're logging in from their home computers uh, onto, you know, the uh, our bank accounts, our websites, our databases, our production system, everything. They've got the keys to the kingdom. I'm really glad it's protected by LastPass. LastPass has done a lot in enterprise to make it more than just uh, a password manager. Of course, it's a great password manager. And, and, and if you're in the IT department, you'll be glad to know it ensures oversight of shadow IT. You've got enforceable policies across all password protected sites. So, for instance, we require two-factor on their master password. We have minimum password requirements, things like that. But they've added more. They've got single sign-on now, more than 1,200 single sign-on apps. That makes it really easy for employees to use something without having to remember a password. I haven't even used a password. You just say, yes, on the phone. Yeah, that's me. I'm trying to log in. And boom, they're in. And, of course, again, IT has centralized control. Always knows exactly who's accessing what from where. That's really important. They've also added multi-factor authentication. Of course, they have two-factor, and I've always used two-factor with LastPass. You can use an authenticator, but now they've got biometric. You can use fingerprint or face. I really I love unlocking my LastPass with Face ID. It makes it very easy. They even go beyond that. They now use contextual factors, things like uh, IP address or geolocation. To, again, it's all about authentication. It's all about making sure the person who's using your business resources is the right person. You got to be thinking as you're sending employees home, as you're as you're dealing with the crisis. You got to be thinking about additional layers of defense beyond the password. And of course, password LastPass does everything right. That's what Steve verified. I mean, they never send. They don't even store the master password. They don't know it. Which is good, because if LastPass can't access your data, no one else can, right? Data is only decrypted on your device locally, uh, and it's encrypted before it syncs to LastPass. So it's sent encrypted, it's encrypted, it stays in place encrypted, and only you have access to it. That's really, really important. And it, by the way, every device, Android, iOS, Mac, Windows, Linux, every browser, I use LastPass everywhere I am. It's the first program I install when I'm setting up a new system. 256-bit AES encryption, that's the best you can get. LastPass protects, but, and this is really important for business, it also provides a seamless workflow for your employees. It's convenient and secure, and that's a tough thing to do. LastPass can help make remote work simple and secure. Go to lastpass.com slash twit. Find out how they can help your business stay productive and secure no matter what happens. lastpass.com slash twit. Thank you, LastPass. Uh, they're pretty much keeping us alive right now. <laughs> so thank you, LastPass. <laughs> thank you, LastPass. Thank you, LastPass. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Now I I don't know if you remember, but way back when I said pick a story, any story. Um, Mine is number ninety eight. Number nine. Number ninety eight. <laughs> number ninety eight. Number ninety eight. Number 98. Amazon sues. Oh yeah, we talked about this on Windows Weekly. Brian uh, Hall. Um, because he took a job after leaving Amazon because of the face recognition software, which I think is really interesting. He left and he took a job doing kind of the same thing, marketing uh, at Google, cloud marketing at Google. And Amazon says, y uh, 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 you have a non-compete. Right. <laughs> Did you I triggered something. I was going to say, did you fire somebody's, up your phone? Somebody's talking to me. Um, <laughs> he, was, he was apparently a Microsoft. In fact, the reason we talked about Windows Weekly, very well uh, respected at Microsoft, did a lot of good and interesting things. He went to work uh, 18 months ago uh, at uh, as vice president of product marketing, uh, quit along with others uh, because he wasn't happy with Amazon's uh, treatment of its workers. Not it wasn't about face recognition; it was treatment of workers. Amazon, and then got a job at uh, Google. Amazon suing, saying you signed an eighteen-month non-compete. Now that's not enforceable in California. Don't tell Aunt that. That's not. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, see that. See, there was that caveat, but then there was also the caveat in that piece that mentions uh, he spoke with another one of the 
members of leadership at Amazon that made it seem like it was it was okay that he went ahead and ah. took the job at Google. And when I read that, I'm thinking, have you lost your mind? You get that crap in writing, dude. Yeah. Apparently, yep. um, AWS Vice President of Worldwide Management, Ariel Kelman, told him, oh, yeah, that, that, that non-compete, that's not enforceable. <laughs> 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 well, Amazon's going to try and force it. She also said uh, she'd never seen Amazon attempt to enforce the clause against a marketing employee. Um, so Hall thought, okay, I guess I can do it. So I, I guess non-competes, certainly legal in Washington State, but as I was always told, maybe, maybe just as mistakenly, that non-competes are not enforceable in California. Um, we don't actually make our, uh, our uh, hosts sign contracts anymore. We used to. Uh, but well, see, what gets me is there are people that are against these non-competes, and then there's people like me. I have no problem with the non-compete, at least with the, the spirit of it. It's because you're an honorable, um, honorable person. Well, I mean, it's, this is competition. You know, business is business, and business usually means competition with the other people within the same um, line of work that you're in. And you don't want to necessarily have your best players, if you will, leave your team to go to your competing team and end up whipping your butt, you know, so you have to figure out a way to try to at least level the playing field and keep them from doing that. And I think that makes perfect sense. I don't know if the actual term should be two years or 18 months. I don't know how they come up with those terms, but it makes sense for them to say, hey, you can't go work for our competitor, direct competitor, for X amount of days or X amount of months or something like that. I, it just makes sense because of all of the security knowledge that you may have or other company secrets that you may have that could be uh, of a disadvantage if it comes from one of your competitors. I'm going to hold you, you to think? this, Ant. <laughs> 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 we don't, I mean, uh, I, I think the the thinking and the reason why California doesn't allow it is because it keeps you from shopping yourself and getting the best job possible, right? I, you know, so if I have a non-compete with you, I could say you can't work anywhere else for 18 months. That means if somebody came to you with a better offer, you couldn't take it. And so okay, that's, that makes sense. Yeah, that's why it's considered right. illegal. But you're an, you're an, uh, an honorable person. We, the reason we don't do contracts, and we used to make our employees sign contracts, but we realized, what are we going to do, sue you? We had one employee, literally, one of our hosts, sign a contract with us, and the next day quit. He signed like a, a three-year contract, and they quit. And Lisa and I went, well, what, uh, what good is the contract? Yeah. Right. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to sue. That yeah, would be it costs terrible. Yeah, money. Yeah, and it, what's my goal in suing? Getting him to come back to work? Oh, that's a good way to make a friend. <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah. we just, we just, you know, we don't. But we, we used to say things like, you know, we'd appreciate, and I think we've told you this verbally, we'd appreciate it if you let us know before you do yeah. a show for somebody else or something like that. But yeah, you know. I, and and that makes perfect sense to me, and I think that's just more like common sense. But yeah. maybe you just think it's yeah. honor. <laughs> He wasn't unhappy. He just got a better job. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> this yeah. guy. Uh, I guess he got a better job. I didn't think it was better. but uh, right. Anyway, anyway, uh, as a talent, I've always had awful. I have a contract with Premier, awful contracts, you know. But I don't, I don't know how. I can understand why this person, this vice president, who, by the way, is no longer at Amazon, told him, mm. ah, you can quit. Nobody's going to sue you. Because that's kind of what you'd expect. Why would they? Why would they want to? Uh, let's see here. Let's move on. Do Jeff? What so was I have your a quick story. story. Yeah, yes. one fourteen. Since we're playing that game, I like it. As this line is really short. It's only a tweet. It's a it's a it's a tweet. That's all it is. Is a tweet. Tweet from Twitter. Sharing from an Twitter. article can spark conversation. So you may want to read it before you tweet it. <laughs> yeah. We know that a great oh percentage of articles of retweets and of Facebook reshares are, are just shared because of the headline of the picture, not because people read it. Right? Yeah. Hmm. So, so Twitter is going to do what I think Facebook does behind the scenes was they see whether or not you've actually clicked off and, and read the link before you share it. Oh, that's and Twitter, does you, Facebook do that, really? They Facebook, yeah, Facebook uses oh. that as, as so a signal. So they'll say, uh, you can't share that. 
You no, you can it? share it, but no, they're not really going to see it. Oh. See, they'll they'll the they'll power factor Facebook. that in as a way to say whether you're just doing the headline or whether you've actually read it. Uh, they said that out loud. Um, so Twitter doesn't really promote that much, but it's trying to urge you to do that. Now, there's plenty of times when I will have read an article earlier in the day, and then somebody writes about it, and they link to it, and they say something about it, and I say, yeah. And I, yeah, well, I agree. I read that article, and, and Twitter didn't know I read it. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's not foolproof. Yeah. Gab's response, Gab.com's response to Twitter we're not oh, going to do this because oh. we don't treat our people like children. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Gab, of oh, course, uh, the home of neo-Nazis everywhere. Oh, um, boy. <laughs> that is a problem because I think a lot of times people, headlines don't often don't accurately reflect the contents of the, of the story. Not at all. Yeah. It's so annoying, so annoying. Yeah, they really should do a better job of that. But usually it's a different, Jeff, it's a different person often, right, writing the headline? Yes, yes. So, you know, but what about the people like I see where Mega Maroney on this tweet says, you know what, none of her or New York Times or Washington Post are her subscriptions. They're not tied to her Twitter account. So how would so, you know if I read it? You know, it, it's that's a good point. How would they yeah. know? Right. Um, oh, that's interesting. So so the presumption is you're on Twitter and you see something and you want to retweet it, and since you didn't click it before you tried to retweet it, then you didn't read it. Which Therefore, you didn't read it. Which isn't necessarily which, the case. Right, because there's a lot of times I have read same stories somewhere else. Let's say, for example, Canon's new R6 and R5 cameras are expected to be released in July of 2020. I saw that on four different websites. Right. But so, I'm going to retweet it from right, one, possibly. Right, right. You know. That's fair. Could this be a backhanded slap again at the president because he keeps retweeting, you know, white supremacists? Oh, he, he doesn't. I'm sorry, I get in trouble with your <laughs> listeners. He doesn't read anything. So, no. <laughs> so there is actually a defense for like I didn't read it. <laughs> I no, didn't know. No. I didn't know what that was all about. So his most recent one saying that the, the poor 75 year old. Catholic protester who was slammed to the body slammed to the ground by the Buffalo police was secretly an Antifa agitator who was and then he, scanning he their fell police radio more than he was pushed. It did. He fell harder than he was pushed. That pushed, retweet, yeah, said, interesting. But he didn't, that know. wasn't something he read. It was something it he was saw on OANN. Yeah, OAN. yeah. I, I wouldn't know because I've been on social media hiatus, so I couldn't tell you. Oh, you missed there. that one. It was good. <laughs> he retweeted a story from uh, the, what is it, Official American Network? What does OAN stand for? I don't even know what Something, it stands for, yeah. Uh, that was actually a Russian guy. The, the, the piece was a guy with a, with a Russian accent. Oh boy. Saying this guy was clearly look, you can see the fun he's scanning. It turns out this guy is a correspondent for Sputnik, which is the Russian propaganda oh boy. service. <laughs> Even admit it. <laughs> it's like, oh my god! So clearly, I mean, I don't know what's going on. Maybe, but that's what I'm wondering. Maybe Twitter's saying, "Hey, Donald, watch the story first. But no, that they're not saying that. <laughs> no, they're not saying they're that not because saying they that. do have the power to directly at <laughs> him. Not gonna say that. <laughs> hey, Donnie. Uh, did I should mention real quick that uh, actually. Um, Nine to five Google debunked, or no, somebody else debunked the um, new Pixelbook story. So I'm disappointed and sad again. Chrome uh, Unboxed said, uh uh. Where's no, that sad Sorry, no evidence. Mr. Brockman. <laughs> so never mind. Wah, wah, right. wah, wah, sad trombone. Sorry, Mr. Um, that doesn't sorry. mean they're not going to do it, Jeff. No, it doesn't mean they're not going to do it, but just, you know, just Chrome Unboxed said, we, we look for any evidence we can. We'd love to have it, but we can't say that there's really any evidence yet that there is. Twitter is working, working to bring back verification. Where did it go? Did it, is, there's no, they cut it out a while ago. Yeah, then they did it specially. I worked with them. Um, I was not paid, uh, but I, uh, at the request, I helped them get a bunch of uh, COVID uh, scientists verified. So that they that still do the blue runoff. check, but they don't have that process where anyone can apply. Yes, they don't, oh, yeah, they haven't had that long time. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's been a while. I've been trying, and they're like, nope, we're not doing it anymore. Oh. Well, if you go to school and you get your uh, PhD in virology and you work on COVID, then maybe I can do something for you. 
Maybe okay. I can help. I right, completely me, think you look like a professor 15 now. So. Years. <laughs> yeah, we'll <laughs> talk in 15 years. Yeah, um, 15. I think that that check in something like in a case like that, that's really important to say this person yeah. really does have the, That's why they did it. The, the I was very happy. And, 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 and the, the scientists were amazingly grateful for getting it. It was phenomenal to watch. Good. Well, it turns out they, they paused this in 2017 after the Charlottesville Tiki Torch rally when Heather Heyer was run down by a white supremacist. Um, the company right. gave a blue check to a white supremacist who tweeted disparaging remarks about Heather Heyer and got in so much trouble for it that they decided we maybe we better not do this anymore. Verification was meant to, they, this was the tweet at the time, meant to authenticate identity and voice. People unfortunately interpret it as an endorsement or an indicator of importance. We recognize we have created this confusion. We need to resolve it. So we've paused verifications. That was three years ago. Yeah, I know it's been a little while. Well, I'm glad I have my blue check. <laughs> By the way, uh, Jack Dorsey is giving $3 million to Colin Kaepernick's Know Your Rights camp. So, yep. yep. Nice. Heard that. Nice. Nice. Not uh, surprised either. No. No, Jack's been... Uh, Jack's a decent man. Yeah. He is. Yeah. He tries. Uh, That's what I was going to say. He tries. Wow, I'm way yeah, down nobody, here. Nobody succeeds all the time, but he tries. Yeah. I'm way down here at 119. Whatever happened to 84 and 37? Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do to the rundown? It's all the way. I'm way at the bottom now. For those of you who can't figure out what's going on, it's just, it's just the spreadsheet. It's the line numbers of these stories. Every story has a line number. Which we've never used. Ant was the first person to ever use them. Yeah. It'd actually be a great story. So it was a great major innovation. Every line number has a story. <laughs> Um, Zoom. Oh, I loved Steve Gibson yesterday. He had done a whole security now on the white paper Zoom released by the prestigious cryptographers they had hired about how Zoom was going to do end-to-end -end encryption. As in the Keybase people? Or yeah, Keybase and folks? Alex Stamos and a bunch of other people. Okay. But, <laughs> but then Zoom's CEO said... Well, free users aren't going to get end-to-end -end encryption. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> because, because we want the police to be able to see what they're doing. Or pay, or you got to pay for it, period. Yeah, and actually there's a legitimate point to yeah, that. Alex Stamos is, said it's not as simple as that. Yeah, Alex Stamos Alex. has lost all credibility with me. Oh, come on. Oh, he has. Oh listen boy. to Steve's Go listen on. to Steve's exegesis <laughs> of the the statement that Stamos the tweet Stamos put out and the statement that that uh, yesterday that Zoom put out. I I hadn't read it. As he's reading it, I'm saying, Steve, those are mutually incompatible statements. They're oh, saying no. there it's clear this is window dressing and BS. That the, that the that because the things that they that Zoom said they're going to do don't it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. And Stamos's very lukewarm response on Twitter, if you read between the lines, said, hey, all we did is write the white paper. It's up to, to Zoom to implement it. He's not taking responsibility for the implementation. Uh. He isn't. Read it carefully. He's not. He's saying, well, you know, I, all I can speak about is what we told He's him. also not an employee. He's a consultant. He's a consultant. Consultant. <laughs> So it's very confusing. Uh, Yuan told investors that encryption, he said, quote, this is a quote, free users, for sure, we don't want to give them that because we also want to work together with FBI, with local law enforcement, in case some people use Zoom for a bad purpose. Okay, fine. Actually, I kind of understand that because if you're using it for free, they can't authenticate you. They'd have no way of knowing who you are. So... Okay, maybe I understand that. But the problem is that what they're trying to do with encryption and then encryption even for paid users, it's pretty clear from their statement that Zoom does have the keys. Zoom, that it's end-to-end -end encrypted, but Zoom can unlock it. 
Oh, so they can still see. They can still give it. To, so, in my opinion, this statement was to oh, a complete, I didn't a catch complete that. Uh, attempt to uh, what is it? Magicians do misdirect the the press. Yeah. Say, Slide see, so that the press would go crazy about free users should get it too, instead of really noticing what the Zoom's doing, which is we can give anything to law enforcement because we have the keys. Period. Oh boy. It, which wow. is, means it's not, a, a, once again, it's Just not it's end to end encrypted. It's not end to end <laughs> encrypted. And so, once again, they're misrepresenting what they're doing, as they always have. And this just kind of, this is as Zoom has always acted. So, it, to me, I was giving them a lot of credit because of the people they brought in, but I think that was window dressing, honestly. Um, Zoom does not proactively monitor meeting content. And we do not share information with law enforcement except in circumstances like, like child sex abuse. Now, this is the incompatible statements. We do not have back doors where participants can enter meetings without being visible to others. Oh, no, okay, that's not incompatible. None of this no. will change. Zoom's end-to-end -end encryption plan balances the privacy of its users with the safety of vulnerable groups, including children and potential victims of hate crime. We plan to provide end-to-end -end encryption to users for whom we can verify identity thereby limiting harm to these vulnerable groups. But wait, they just said they would share information with law enforcement in circumstances like child sex abuse. So which is it? Is it end-to-end -end encrypted or do they have the key? They're very clearly saying, we have the key. And if, right. if we think it's merited, we'll share it. Well, guess what makes it merited? A warrant. Right. Period. Because if you have the key, law enforcement can say, let's see it. Right, but they're arguing that, that it's being used by child porn people and they tend to use quick accounts. And those, I mean, I, no, no, but they're saying is, we'll provide end to end encryption, but then they're also oh, saying see, we will. We will not share information with law enforcement except in circumstances like child sex abuse. If they can share the information, it's not end-to-end -end encryption. They are mutually incompatible statements in one right. paragraph. Right. Yeah. True. So Steve was kind of like, okay. Good catch. Yeah. Good catch. Thank you, Steve. That's why we love him. So, but again, honestly, most of the time you're using... By the way, Zoom also said in that statement, and nobody else does end-to-end -end encryption either. <laughs> and hmm. and its truth is for most conferences, like the conferences we use Zoom for, sales calls and staff meetings, who cares if it's encrypted? But on the other hand, if you're a physician or a psychiatrist using Zoom for confidential calls with your clients, maybe you should use something that is ended encrypted, not Zoom. I would hope so anyway. <laughs> Well, I think it's very clear. Um, so uh, I, I agree with you about Alex's tweets, but I think if you read clearly, he's basically saying, look, we gave them the, uh, the way to do it, but we're not taking any Got responsibility it. for if they do it. <laughs> ACLU suing Los Angeles over their controversial scooter tracking system. Is there more to say about that? I don't know. That's just the story. No. No. Uh, <laughs> I need more scooters here. Uh, did you? I mean, this is what's sad is that Uber and uh, uh, other companies are just taking them and putting them in the scrap heap. They're not reselling them or anything. They're just trashing them, which is which is a waste. And bicycles. You can't, you can't get a bike that right now. Right. Yeah, you can't get one. They're just crushing them. Uh, they don't want to oh. be responsible because those bikes. I got to tell you, having ridden rental rental bikes and rental scooters, they're in pretty bad shape. They don't want to be responsible for any. Injuries incurred. Yeah, that's true. More CYA. All right, would you like to do a change log? Does that feel good right now? Because we got to yeah. wrap this up. Before Ooh, we go, yes. how about a Google change log? <laughs> the Google change log. I got one for Mr. Ant Pruitt. <laughs> Google camera 7.4, which is the app, not out yet, but it will be out soon. Uh, rolling out with 1080p 4K resolution quick toggles. And, oh, darn it. It looked like XTA developers was saying 8x zoom, but now Android Police is saying that 
is or isn't available. I don't know. 8X Zoom for videos on the Pixel 4 I, I, and 4 XL? I would hope not. That sounds I hate, awful. <laughs> I hate these high zoom Yeah, because it's not optical, right? No, it's it's ridiculous. Right. Two to two and a half tops. Leave is that acceptable? That. Okay. That's, that's the, that's the ant limit? Yeah, because it, it it's so pixelated and grainy, the quality is just uh, it's not usable. Stop okay. at about two, two and a half got, at the at the most. I had my, if it were me. Had my phone on the cheat charger. Let's see. And system update, restart now. Android R, here we go. Oh, you went with the beta, that's right. <laughs> I don't know what kind of visit video resolution I'll have, but Anyway, it's unclear what you're going to get, but keep your eye out for Google Camera version 7.4. Um, it will uh, apparently be rolling out soon, maybe maybe today for the, on the Play Store. Uh, 8x yeah, for videos. Yeah, that seems like too much. Visit video resolution, quick toggles. That I'd like because it's you, it's kind of deep in the settings to change the video uh, resolution. Yep. So it'd be nice to have that. Because most of the time I just want to do 1080p, but every once in a while I'd like to do 4, 4K, right? Mm -hmm. It'd be nice to be able to quickly switch. A little party going on over there. <laughs> it sounds like somebody's happy back there. Happiness. That's good. <laughs> She's just looking at her blue purple Jeep Wrangler and <laughs> smiling. <laughs> smiling. Uh, Google search... Wants to make Control F a thing of the past, man. I use that all the freaking time. Well, I, they're not. Gonna, I, I got scared when I saw this. I was going to have a fit, a Jeff fit. But it, they're just, they're just, they're not going to eliminate it. They're just going to say we're going to not. You're not going to want to use it anymore. You won't we'll need to. What you searched for uh, will show in, up. Will be highlighted and so. uh, see how it's bolded. See headline writers. It's boldened. Yeah, headline writers. So it's still going to have Control F, so you can search within a page. But more likely, you'll just note that the term you searched for will be bold in the mm -hmm. snippet, if they're still allowed to do snippets. If, I was going to say, are there snippets still out there, though? Yeah. What's the snippet <laughs> yes, status? Yes, by God, yes. We should forget the change log. We should just have a weekly snippet status. <laughs> snippet status. Say it three times fast. Snap it, snippet it is. Uh, YouTube makes video chapters official. Oh, I'm so mad about this, because it means now that everybody's going to be asking us to do it. Um Aunt, would you? <laughs> I don't want to because it's too much work. It makes our editors have to. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Would you do? Yeah. Would you take advantage of this, Aunt? Negative. Um, it's nice for, for users because the they can jump to the part of the thing that they want. Well, I mean, the videos that I particularly create are fifteen minutes or less. Right. And so you don't. In need my that. opinion, I'm like, there's no need for that. Uh, you come there for a particular lesson. Right. And. I'm giving you that lesson in a condensed format of 15 minutes or less. You, you know? know who is using it, uh, I think, is Alex Lindsay in his office hours. So you know that he has these early morning calls he does right. with creators. You've you've been in there. Uh, yes, sir. In fact, I'm going to be on uh, J June 18th. He's going to have me uh, on as a guest. But you see Thanks. how when you go to the notes here, mm -hmm. he's got the show notes, but next to it is a time, and you can click it and jump right to that part of the call which mm -hmm. i is wonderful that's uh, cool for something that's you know an hour an hour long plus, yeah you exactly know? um the problem is somebody's got to do it yeah <laughs> ain't gonna be me <laughs> um, and i'm pretty sure mr Lindsay isn't doing it either <laughs> no no he's not he even said it's got some there's a guy who does it for him it's a volunteer. Yeah. So if you add it. chapters so to your video, you can actually, the way you do it is you do it via the description. You start a list of timestamps with zero colon zero zero, followed by a chapter title. You do one on each line. So you'd have to know where the timestamps are. But And that's what, as you can see, if you look here, that's what Alex has, uh, has mm -hmm. done or his, his helper has done. So as he was writing out the notes, he just wrote out the times. And what Google does automatically is make that a direct link into the video, which is, that's I cool. think, really cool. That's nice cool. feature for those who have more time than I do. <laughs> Available on desktop, Android, and iOS right now. Come on, you have time. You just have to make less sourdough. <laughs> 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 I had to give you a hard I'm time. I'm throwing away the sourdough. Now I'm making brisket. <laughs> <laughs> Can you make brisket, I mean, uh, sourdough biscuits with your brisket? Ooh, mm. biscuits and brisket. Yeah. yeah. 
Actually, that's another thing I want to do, Ant. Maybe I need a tutorial on that for you. I want to make soft southern biscuits. I, that's one thing I can't do. You need the flour. I, my biscuits are, I've never been are able they, to get biscuits are right. Are they clinkers? I, Oh, they're either bricks or they're like um, blocks of clay. They're so yeah. brittle. I can yeah. never get that. They say you down. have to get that special flour that you can only. You can't even buy it on Amazon from here. You have to go to Greenville, South Carolina to get it. <laughs> That's what they say. Chop the wheat down. Chop the, it's, Separate the wheat it's from the chaff. Special soft wheat. It's get a stone water mill. Stone ground. <laughs> YouTube has published an in-depth guide to monetization. Um, so it's that you can as easy as people may assume. No, it understand is. more clearly the types of content advertisers may not wish to appear against. Creators apparently often confused by why you can't put ads on some stuff. Um, we get this uh, occasionally from advertisers who say we don't want. We got one from an advertiser who said, if you're going to talk about COVID-19, we don't want an ad on that show. To which I said, screw you. Yeah. <laughs> you're not telling me what to do in my show. It's not like we're doing, uh, you know, here's a special treatment for COVID-19 or something. We're not selling silver underwear. Right. So um, I understand that they wouldn't want to be on a scammy thing. Anyway, Google... Uh, is talking about also hate content, but prank content um, and other things that you just won't be able to uh, monetize. And so it's good. It, they should tell people, frankly, what not to do. Don't you think, Jeff? Yeah. On the other hand, uh, as an editorial person, I don't want to be told by an advertiser what not to do. I don't feel like that's, although it's their right to say, I don't want my ads on that content. So it's, it's tricky. It's tricky. I'm glad Google's doing it transparently. Uh, I love it that Andro uh, Google Maps and Apple Maps have both adapted to changes in D.C. street names. Black Lives Matter. Plaza is... Uh, quickly. Quickly. Oh, quickly. That's awesome. Yeah. It's really nice. Uh, you saw they added on to that mural... Uh, in yellow, um, defund, defund, defund police. police. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I joked on Twitter today that that Twitter was the new street, and the street is the new Twitter. Um, <laughs> you, know, you can just paint your big tweet on the street. Yeah, look at this. This is this is uh, so cool. It's pretty they, amazing. They, they actually, the satellite image sh shows it. Uh, Google has not updated it. We checked this yesterday on uh, MacBreak Weekly. The top is Google Maps. The bottom is uh -huh. Apple Maps. Um, Apple Maps, I think they made an effort to get later satellite in imagery because that was only painted uh, recently. Google did rename the street on the map. To, you could see it says Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter Plaza, but they that's haven't yet updated the satellite. Cool. Isn't that great? I think that's right. Yeah, it's the it's thing to so do. so amazing. I also, the mayor of D.C. says, you know, we're not going to uh, take off the defund police. But that's free speech. Free yeah. speech. What a concept. What a concept. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine that. No, I want a regulator to decide what's what's there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I ever said that, Jeff. No, you didn't. I'm just okay. I'm mocking others. Others. Google search and maps will soon display business hours for us old folks, Jeff. Oh, God. It's always six in the morning. Why is it always freaking six in the morning? What do they we have to get up to the when, bathroom? That's when you and I are up. <laughs> All those old <laughs> folks are up early, and I'm going to... So you can now add uh, to your Google, if you're a business, and you should add this, uh, pick up a delivery information, accessibility information, as uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff. So um, you can now set store so hours with uh, for seniors. Thank Having you. a little stuff like that really does help you out in the search too, right? Absolutely. I would bet because I'm going to search, you know, where can I get, you know, a special senior discount at Applebee's. Google, and I haven't had a chance to try this yet, has now added noise cancellation to Meet. We should, we're going to do our, uh, we're going to have our editorial meeting tomorrow. I mean, so our, right after the show, actually. Tomorrow? So, no, no, sorry, Ant. 
Didn't mean to say that. Right after the show. Uh, so I'm going to make some tapping noises in the background. I'm going to start vacuuming. I'm going to get the dog to bark, and we'll see if we can hear it. Because supposedly, Just like any other meeting. Just like right. any other meeting. Supposedly, poor Google Meet. They are in third place. Uh, Zoom, obviously in first place, just 30 times increase in usage between December and April. Phenomenal. 30 times. Uh, Meet has had 100 million daily meeting participants in the month of April. Um, but that's nothing compared to the 300 million Zoom has. And Microsoft has claims 200 million on Teams. So, three, two, one. And that is the Google change log. Uh. Love it. Were you shocked that uh, James Bennett resigned? Uh, In the end, no. Jeff, no. He was kind of no. opinion no. editor at the New York Times who claimed, <laughs> it's kind of hard to believe, I never read that Tom Cotton editorial <laughs> before I published it. How could that be? Do you think he didn't I, read it? It, it could be uh, uh, Dow, who's under him and charge Bob Head, uh, has left his job and is going somewhere in the newsroom now. So maybe, could, the, you know, yeah. Dow he's said throwing to, people under Dad the bus. Dad said to Bennett, I read it. You don't have to read it. Just put it in the paper. It's good. With a really inflammatory headline over the inflammatory text. Yeah, yeah. good idea. Good idea. <laughs> Uh, Alexis Ohanian quit uh, uh, from Reddit, says uh, you could fill my board seat with a black candidate. Reddit says, okay, deal. He also pledges a million dollars to Colin Kaepernick's Know Your Rights camp. Okay, I didn't know. When did this happen? I didn't know about that. A couple of days ago. Wow. A couple of days ago he quit, but I think they just replaced him today. Um, oh, did they replace with him? A, yeah, they replaced oh, him with wow. the founder of... Um, uh, Michael Sab uh, Siebel. Thank you. He's yes, uh, thank you. CEO of uh, Y Combinator. And uh, Justin well, TV. Well, he but he also founder. was the founder, founder of Justin TV. Yeah, yes. I probably know the guy. That that's awesome. Good for you. Siebel's actually a perfect, perfect person to put in that seat. Yeah. And and Alexis is busy. He doesn't need that. No, Alexis is. He's doing fine. Doing fine. Doing fine. But I think that's really. I mean, it's more. I think that's more than lip service. That's saying it is. I was trying to think of what need, I could quit to. We Pass need on. better representation on the board of Reddit, and I think that's yeah. really important. As many folks in my community have said over the last few years, we just want a seat at the table. Absolutely. Yep. You yep. want to be in the room where it happens. Yeah, and that that that's pretty damn gum awesome. Yay. Yay. Uh, and I'm so pleased <laughs> that Netflix won in its copyright battle <laughs> against the United States military... <laughs> <laughs> because they copyrighted the term Space Force first. <laughs> Air Force says, you can't call that show Space Force. Actually, they're not worried about that. It's the T-shirts. <laughs> they don't want them to sell T-shirts. Uh, but the, uh, the Have problem, you watched the show? Yeah, I watched the whole thing. I actually liked it. Everybody it? got the worst reviews ever. I want former TV guy critic Jeff yeah, Jarvis. I will, I will. To watch. I need to I watch it. I haven't. Drama. I have it queued, but I haven't watched it yet. You know what? People were hoping it would be another Veep. You know that it would be biting okay. satire because the whole the whole premise is an unnamed president has created uh, a, a branch of the Air Force called Space Force, and he says we're going to have boots on the moon by 2026. <laughs> and <laughs> Steve Carell is the four star general put in charge. And oh uh, and it could have been like Veep, where it's biting satire, uh, John, uh, which I still watch to this day on my my Plex. Veep server. is the most amazing show ever. <laughs> um, John Malkovich plays the chief scientist in there. He's fabulous in it, um, but he's got the scientist voice too. He's perfect, as one <laughs> reviewer said, he's perfectly louche. But uh, they didn't go for the biting comedy the the they didn't go for the satire they it's mm -hmm. they went for the just kind of like oh it's nice kind of and you kind of it's a it's you know you feel steve carell turns out to be a really nice guy with lots of principles and it just doesn't have the the edge to it i i enjoyed it i laughed out loud a few times i uh, watched it uh, i look forward to watching it. my favorite part or one of my favorite parts at least appropriate to this audience is 
the uh, social media expert who's played <laughs> uh, by Ben Schwartz. It's very oh, man, funny. Really? And his Schwartz name. Schwartz is in this too? Yeah. And his name, <laughs> I can't even say on the show because. It's an Italian name, but they make it sound really. Every time they say his name, it sounds obscene. And it's, it's not John Raphael. No, it's very funny, <laughs> I have to say. And he is the worst social media guy ever. He is like oh, exactly gosh. what you'd expect. You know, he's it's just it's hysterical. I thought it was funny. Uh, it wasn't it, what it could have been, which is you know a biting political satire. But mm -hmm. there, how many veeps are there in the world after all? Um, let us, uh, do our picks. Do you have a thing? You have several things, Mr. Ant Pruitt. <laughs> just two, just two. Uh, I have one in particular for the Twit audience. Uh, someone recommended this to me a year or so ago, and I still use this service and it's called Wonderstat. Yeah. I can't remember her name. I'm sorry. I don't remember your name at this moment, but you recommended it to me on Twitter and man, this thing really does save my bacon from time to time. Uh, it allows me to go in and see what's chewing up all of my disk space. And it usually ends up being some temp folder that I don't need anymore. And it does a great job of allowing you to go in and just, just pick out exactly where the problem is. It just puts it in this big old colorful chart. So it makes it easy to find and not having to let Microsoft try to find it for you is so much faster. Yep. And for people like you Linux nerds, there is a Linux version available called Caterstat. And I believe there's also an OS X version. Yes. Too. Disk Inventory X, which I've used. I've recommended all three for years. It, it, it's often the case. Windows is the worst at this where you have just, you can't figure out where the hell my drive go. Yeah. It just it, disappeared. Yeah. I used it yesterday and, and saved 20 gigs. Yeah. <laughs> Those big like blobs. Really? 20 gigs? Yeah, really? I know. It's amazing. <laughs> right? We used to think a two gig hard drive was huge. Oh, gosh, yeah. man. Yeah, I like that, and it's free. Oh, another reason, Jeff, you should watch Space Force. I forgot. Ah. Jin, Jin Yang's on it. Oh, right. We love him. Oh, he yeah, is yeah. He's really yeah. good in it. He's hysterical in it with that same dry humor that he has. Have in you Silicon watched Valley. his stand up? Have you no. watched his stand-ups? He's got a stand-up special on Netflix, too. Oh, I haven't watch watched it, it yet. Because he's very, very deadpan, hysterical, right, yeah. just as good as he was in Silicon Valley. And they actually give him a media, a much media role. So, Oh, nice. Oh, good good yeah. for him. So Winderstat.net, I agree. And it's free. It's free. Free, free, free. And do you want to um, do the Curtis Jackson, too? Yep. My other one is a book called Hustle Harder, Hustle Smarter by Curtis Jackson, AKA also known as 50 Cent. 50 Cent, um, as we white folks call him. <laughs> <laughs> I just got this book on uh, Audible uh, it's last week or so, and um, I'm, I'm, I haven't started it yet, but I wanted to recommend it anyway because I know a bit of his story. And between him and Ice Cube, when you think about where they came from in the very beginning as far as their humble living and the things that they dealt with in the day-to-day -day lifestyle with the, you know, violence and stuff like that. Then getting into the music industry uh, and just grassroots and blowing up and, and just getting all of this fame and fortune and then being able to pivot even more from the music industry to get into Hollywood, if you will. Ice Cube has done an amazing job with, you know, writing his own movies and things of that nature, 50 cents the same way. He's done a lot outside of the music industry and continues to just keep growing and just as he says, hustling harder and smarter. And is he he deserves the credit. Now granted he is one of the best um trolls out there on the internet. He's <laughs> good at trolling people. <laughs> you know, if people want to learn how to troll, follow 50 Cent because he does a good I job. I admire him because hard time. <laughs> you see so many guys make it big in the music industry, make millions of dollars, and then not handle it. And right. so I do admire that. Uh, and Fiddy narrates it if you get the audio book. Yeah, I, I, I said I had to go ahead and get that because I know his story and just, you know, selling music out of the trunk of a car and stuff like that. And look at him now, you know, this is crazy. That's nice. That's awesome. Uh, Mr. J.J. Jarvis. 
That's uh, let's see here. I already gave up one of them. I think the other one that I would do is uh, national TV advertising fell by 26% in April year over year. Now, we expect that's somewhat temporary, but some of that money that flies away and doesn't need to be on TV is going to learn, doesn't need to be on TV, and then going to come back. Mm-hmm. So uh, newspaper advertising is way down. Magazine advertising is way down. TV advertising is down. Podcast it's going to be trouble in big old media. Is way down. <laughs> 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 I keep thinking, though, that it's just a matter of time before, and I still believe this will happen, uh, we take a, a chunk of that um, yep. general yep. media buy because w- we work so much better than the general media. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. They, yeah. They've just got to learn the ways. They've got to learn how well, they've been wasting their money. Someday that day yes. will come. Actually, our advertisers know it. But, uh, you know. You need other advertisers. We need, we need General yes. Motors, General Mills, all the generals we need. I just saw two new advertisers <laughs> come by in the email, so that's good news. That's good. Oh. Gee, I haven't seen that either. One, if you, <laughs> one, one new advertiser and one giving away nice things at the front desk. That was the other one. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, there is, there is a call tomorrow with one new one. Yes. Is there? Okay. Mm-hmm. I'll be setting up my Traeger grill right at that time. Yeah, you, yeah, you might want to check your email, sir. I don't read. <laughs> Everybody knows I don't read. I don't read my email. I don't want. I don't. I, need, I don't read no email. I don't read no stinking email. <laughs> um, I don't. I didn't do any pick or anything. I was lazy. That's I should fine. probably it's have done late. something. It's late. I know. We've all been here stuff. a long it's, time. It is so damn wonderful to have you. We gotta get him back, back. on the show. I just yeah, the reason I felt like poor, I felt like I'd put in a bad situation because to sit in between Jeff and Stacy as they shoot at each other, <laughs> it's, I, some of the, it's it's the best seat in the house. <laughs> it's a good seat. <laughs> <laughs> but if but anytime well, you want, what's come, really happening is Stacy and I are fine. It's that Leo is trying to um, goad us. Goad you, goad you. I love watching it. I'm goading you. Def- definitely one of my favorites of the week. Definitely. I should probably mention, I meant, I hate to do this again because I picked it already on MacBreak Weekly, but it's such a good deal and there's only a few days left. If you like games, itch.io is an indie game site, itch.io, and they have an amazing bundle. And really, it's as much a story as anything else. The bundle keeps getting bigger. Independent creators keep giving their game, putting their games in it. There are now, in this bundle... 1,509 independent games uh, for $5. Many of them cost more than $5 by themselves. They've got 1,198 creators uh, putting in for this. It's, um, it it's, reminds me of Humble Bundle. Didn't it's Humble like a Bundle Humble Bundle, Bundle but it's the biggest bundle I've ever seen. Wow. And it's raised more money than I've ever seen. It's, Holy they call crap, it, $4 million? Yes. They call it the bundle for racial justice and equality. And this is, again, this is the kind of thing that gives me hope. The proceeds will be split 50-50 with the NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund and the Community Bail Fund, which divvies out its money to community bail funds all over the country. So they were shooting for $5 million. There's five days, as we record, five days left. Uh, they have already... They have 398,000 sales. The average sale is not $5, but $10, because when you buy, your, you can give more. The top contribution, somebody threw in five grand. Wow. And they have raised $4.3 million for racial justice and equality. And so there really are a number of stories here. A, wow, 1,500 games for five bucks. B, wow, $4.3 million. C, all of this for racial justice and equality, and it gives me hope that we maybe this isn't 1968 all over again. Maybe we're Man. finally going to do something. That's awesome. Isn't that great? Thanks to that, games. That's worth that's worth re- repeating, sir. Yeah, I guess yep. so. And 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 what's interesting, and you know, games get a bad rap, but invariably, when gamers on Twitch uh, or the bundles try to raise money for great causes. They raise millions, millions, sure and sure I see that. that on YouTube too. And it's it's uh, never knock a gamer because gamers are some of the most generous people I've ever seen. And here's yeah. a perfect example. It's really yeah. great. Yeah. So itch.io itch.io. 
Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you, Ant, for being here. We'll get you back. I, I think maybe we have to. Yeah. I used to have a seat right here. We can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. You can't socially distance now. Yeah. 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 We'll figure out a way to get you back in. I know my knees feel distance. better sitting in my own desk chair instead of sitting at that desk. With yeah. That maybe, that's, maybe, <laughs> like, maybe that's not such a dangerous spot as uh, sitting here was. Uh, we uh, want to encourage you to watch Ant's shows, Hands on Photography, Hands on Wellness. Uh, they yep. are on the Lots Twit Network. Fun. And uh, I don't know what days they come out. Uh, Hop, Hands-On Photography, is every Thursday, and How, Hands-On Wellness, is every Friday. Don't be insulted. I don't know what days my shows come out either, so it's just my, <laughs> it's just my general fogginess. Thank you, Aunt Pruitt. Thank, Thank you, you, Jeff sir. Jarvis. Jeff is the director of the Town Knight Center for Entrepreneurial Journalism at the Craig Newmark Graduate School of Journalism at the City University of New York. Has you Craig, can end there. Has Craig said anything about, about me? Anything? Yes. Shouting his name, anything? Yes. <laughs> Hi, Craig. <laughs> Hi, Craig. Uh, we love you, Jeff. We have Craig on. We'll get Craig when on. We can, when we can get, we'll yes. get Craig on someday. Um, but I'm just glad we got you guys on. You guys are great. Stacy will be back it's next great. week. And I will be back someday. I <laughs> Thank you for being here. We do Twig every Wednesday. No, I'll be back next week. Every, I don't want to start any more rumors. And yes, we pay Ant. Uh, yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. We do Twig. I think you could negotiate a better deal now, Ant. Yeah, maybe. Oh, boy. Mm, mm. Leverage. <laughs> <laughs> guilt. There's nothing like guilt to really bring out the dollars. Uh, we do this show every... Fear of uh, PR. Fear of PR. Every Wednesday, 1.30 Pacific, 4.30 Eastern, 20.30 UTC. Come by. Say hi. You can watch the live streams at twit.tv slash live. You can also... And there's audio and video there. If you're watching live, you should chat irc.twit.tv. TV. And of course, there's on demand versions of the show. That's why we call it a podcast. Just go to twit.tv slash twig and download it or subscribe in your favorite podcast application. You'll get it automatically. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We'll see you next time on This Week in Google. Bye bye. Hi, I'm Jason Howell, host of All About Android, where each week I'm joined by Ron Richards, Florence Ion, and a rotating crew of Android journalists, developers, and enthusiasts, where we talk about the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. You can subscribe by going to twit.tv slash AAA or find the show in your podcatcher of choice. That's All About Android.